Okay, welcome to the Historic Preservation Commission meeting of Thursday, September 18th, 2014. The time is 5.10 p.m. May we have roll call, please. Commissioner Garpetian? Here. Commissioner Morgan? Here. Commissioner Shire? Here. Madam Chair Vartanian? Here. Commissioner Vidor? Here. Thank you, all presents. Thank you. Number two is report regarding posting of the agenda. The agenda for this meeting was posted on or before Monday, September 15th, 2014 on the bulletin board outside City Hall. Number three is approval of the minutes of August 21st, 2014. Any comments or corrections? I have a few corrections. Uh, page one, oral communications, number four. Um, not really a correction, but it, it would be helpful to add the 11 to 4 time frame as a.m. and p.m. and not just 11 to 4. That would and be a more f interesting tour. <laughs> <laughs> midnight tour. Midnight. Uh, then page 3, number 8, second sentence. Uh, he also updated. That should be a D on the word update. Second, on number eight? Number eight, yeah. second okay. sentence. Oh, it yeah, says he so updated the. Yeah. Okay. That's all. Thank you. Okay. With that, we have a motion. Motion to approve the minutes. Second. Okay. <coughs> Commissioner Vidor? Yes. Commissioner Garpitian? Yes. Commissioner Morgan? Yes. Commissioner Shire? Yes. Madam Chair Vartanian? Yes. Okay. Motion to approve the minutes. August 21st. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Number four is oral communications. Discussion is limited to items not a part of this agenda. Each speaker is limited to five minutes. The commission may question the speaker, but there will be no debate or decision. And I have oops, a few cards. The first speaker is Mike Shea. Good evening, Madam Chair, Commissioners, and City Staff. My name is Mike Shea. I'm the local history librarian for the Glendale Library Arts and Culture Department. I'm here to invite you to a program at the Glendale Central Library next week on Wednesday, September 24th at 7 p.m. The library is sponsoring an event, Flying the Lindbergh Line. Um, an author, Robert Kirk, recreated the trip of the original transcontinental passenger flight that took 48 hours and two overnight train rides and made about 90 minute trips going up and going back down and going up and going down. He recreated the trip with his wife in his own plane. Um, he wrote a book about it and came to uh, the Glendale Central Library Special Collections Room to do a lot of his research. So he will be presenting this. Uh, he gave a presentation to the folks at Disney who've been working on the restoration of the Grand Central Air Terminal a couple weeks ago. <coughs> So he'll be here uh, next week, September 24th at 7 p.m. Uh, in the auditorium. Parking is free across the street for three hours of validation in the library. I'm going to leave some flyers if anyone has any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Sounds like a nice presentation. Okay, next is Greg Grammer. Good afternoon, Chair and members of the Commission. Um, my name is Greg Grammer, and I'm the president of the Glendale Historical Society. And I'm excited to tell you about our upcoming uh, Romantic Revivals Home Tour, which will take place on Sunday, September 28th, from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. Um, this year's tour will feature six outstanding period revival uh, style houses. Um, we have a um, Spanish colonial revival, um, two Mediterranean colonial revivals, a French revival, an American colonial revival, and a storybook house. And tickets and information are available on our website at www.glendalehistorical.org. And I'll leave some uh, flyers at the front. Thank you. And where, where could someone buy tickets the day of? Uh, they can buy tickets the day of the tour at the historic Alex Theater. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker is Sean Bursell. 
Thank you, Madam Chair and members of the Commission. I'm Sean Bursell. I'm Executive Director of the Glendale Historical Society. And I have a statement, um, but before I get to that, I just wanted to note that on the way over, uh, I turned the corner at Jackson and Wilson, and that beautiful little craftsman cottage is now gone that was sitting at the corner, if you know that there. And it just made me very sad. Um, just another um, wonderful little property in Glendale, um, bulldozed, and i um, sure it's going to be replaced with something that is nowhere near as charming or interesting. But I just had to say that. So um, I have a statement from the Glendale Historical Society uh, regarding uh, 1308 Ethel, uh, which was discussed um, last month. Um, the Glendale Historical Society would like to respond to comments made about uh, 1308 Ethel at the last HPC meeting. This property is, as you recall, a contributor to the Ross Moyne Historic District whose owner received permission to eliminate two windows and replace a wood window with fiberglass all within public view, within the public view. Um, TGHS would like once again to note that the city is not interpreting the guidelines correctly when it permits such changes over the counter. Whether fiberglass is an excellent surrogate for wood, as noted uh, by staff, is not the point. The issue here is that where alternative materials are discussed in the historic district guidelines, there are qualifications to their use. It is important to note the exact language of the guidelines. The, the guidelines say things like, when wholesale window replacement is necessary, if an exact match is not possible, um, so those are the qualifications. It's, it's not that in every case uh, it, it, you, can, you can do that. Um, having spoken uh, with three people who were involved in developing or approving the guidelines, uh, none of them um, are currently on city staff, we reject the argument that the guidelines are not to be interpreted as plainly written, that like material was never supposed to be replaced with like, that repair and restoration were not to take precedence over removal, removal and replacement wherever possible. The guidelines refute these in interpretations over and over again. Um, another serious error is the idea, as commissioners were told last month, that owners are allowed to fill in original windows. On the contrary, the guidelines say the arrangement, size, and proportions of historic openings should be maintained. This language is repeated in every section, regardless of style and without qualification. No ifs, ands, or buts. Window replacement is discussed, never elimination. It is impossible to read the guidelines as allowing windows in the public view to be covered over. Any project that involves doing this should come before the HPC to receive an exception to the guidelines. The city's treatment of the guidelines in relation to contributors to historic district, districts relies on what it claims is a fundamental distinction between how they treat Glendale Register properties and contributors. Nowhere is this distinction sanctioned in the guidelines. There are no asterisks or caveats that create separate standards in the handling of register and contributor properties. Uh, the guidelines apply to both equally, except that they govern the entirety of register properties and only those in the public view for historic district contributors. The city is ignoring the clear language of the ordinance if it utilizes a lower standard for contributors than that clearly enunciated in the guidelines. It should come as a surprise to no one that 1308 is a flip. There was an open house last weekend. Now, whatever differences between how the city interprets the intentions of the guidelines and how the Glendale residents who work so hard to develop and approve them interpret them, we hope, the Glendale Historical Society hopes, we can all agree that they were never supposed to allow speculators to disfigure historic resources in order to turn a quick profit, leaving the historic district and the community to live with the damage. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I have no more speakers for oral communications. Close the public hearing. And move to item five, which is comments May I from... ask a quick question, Madam Chair? Yes. Uh, this is for Jay. If I have a house in a historic district and my house is a contributor, and I come apply for uh, window replacement, uh, I would 
What, what do we give them? Is it just the design guidelines, the residential design gu guidelines, the, the code, uh, the building code, and the guidelines of historic districts or not? Do, are they provided with the guidelines of the historic district or not? We, we base our decision making on the guidelines for historic <coughs> districts. Those guidelines apply to all properties in districts. The residential, the comprehensive citywide design guidelines do not any longer apply for the parts of properties you see from the street. Um, if someone asked specifically for the guidelines, we'd obviously give them to them. They're obviously they're online as well. So if I apply for a, a window replacement, those guidelines will be given to me? We, we don't, as a matter of course, hand out the large wood guideline document to every applicant. We work with the guidelines. We print out relevant pages when we need to. We show them the guidelines in meetings when we need okay. to. We make reference to them. So they're aware of the, the details of the guidelines, basically, when they want to replace a window or a door. I can't or speak for the applicants. I can say in the process we use them. So. Do you mean, is staff at the counter aware? Or is no, I mean, <clears throat> many people, they, don't, they hire a contractor or they hire an architect. And maybe that architect or contractor is not aware even there's a, there's a set of guidelines that exist. So. If we let them know, so they won't go out and do whatever, the replacement will, will match the guidelines and the, and, and the code, basically. Yeah, and we did talk last, uh, last month about agendizing a discussion topic related to this in terms of city process and how things work at the counter. And we couldn't do it this month because we just have such a full agenda. I think we're going to have a lighter agenda next month, so we can try <coughs> to do that then. Uh, the only uh, caveat there is we're trying to get a lot of things done by the end of the year so next month we may have more uh, Glendale register hearing items but I think we'll be okay so so we'll do our best to agendize it we, for we're October already, we're already talking about end of the year time flies real fast that's how it goes we, okay. we will Thank have you. it on the agenda though yes, at, at a future meeting hopefully sooner <clears throat> than later mm -hmm. um, item five is comments from commissioners have any comments? Anything? No. Um, I'm. If no one else has anything, I'm. I'm just going to say that I too um, happened to be driving down Ethel Street and noticed that 1308 Ethel um, was put up for sale. So I uh, took a visit, and I was very um, disappointed to find that um, it is a very poorly done remodel, especially on the interior for an obvious flip. Um, the guidelines we know do not extend to interiors of homes, but um, it is a shame that whoever purchased the property and is flipping it for a profit um, did come in, um, initially tried to change out windows without um, permits. You know, did end up going through the process. Um, I will say... No, they, did, they did obtain permits. Or for they the did work, obtain yeah. permits. Um, I will say that I do believe the two windows at the back of the house that were closed may have been on an addition to the property. I believe all of the closed windows weren't visible from the street. There was some confusion at the hearing last month, um, but they retained two original wood windows in their uh, exact openings at the front of the house, just right. wrapping the corner on the driveway. And they've agreed to replace the window in the kitchen uh, that was installed against what the staff approval was. Staff approval met the guidelines. What they installed did not, so they got a violation for that. And they've agreed to bring it back to what they what was agreed on uh, during the uh, staff review. So that do, I don't know if um, anyone has followed up on that. All I know is that it has been painted brown. Yeah, they, they took that on their own, thinking that might solve the problem. We told them it doesn't solve the problem, and we just went, met with them the other day. Again, we shouldn't talk about ongoing cases too much without no, no, an that's agenda fine. item. And, and my only point being that, um, you know, it is a shame in our historic districts, and I, I really don't know how we can avoid um, this. People surely have a right to purchase a home, and if they want to turn it around for a profit. But... Um, you know, education, we keep talking about education and if there's a way to continue educating homeowners and um, potential buyers about what it means to live in a historic district and, and the importance of the properties, especially to those who live within the districts and have taken the time to participate 
as residents. Um, it was also just a little um, disturbing to me to find that another home um, by the same realtor was being offered in another part of the city with the same boilerplate sort of, you know, changes um, that had been done on this house and, and the preview photo. I mean, the home hasn't even been done yet. So it, it, it just was not a quality effort um, within a historic neighborhood, and that's disappointing. So I think education is the key. Right. Just, just so you know, we've talked it. about the brochure that we're preparing that we're going to mail out to every property in districts. Justin Robertson to my right, who will be making his presentation debut before the commission, has done a lot of work on that. We're kind of fine-tuning it right now. Um, the hope would be that toward the end of the year we'll have something ready to, to mail out, and then we're going to do that annually. Right now, and, and that's going to be great. <coughs> it's a start. It's a start. It's a big start. Okay. So with that, we'll move to number seven, which is new business. And um, I'm going to move the order around a little bit at a personal request. And we're going to take 7D first. So that would be uh, 1663 Grandview Avenue, Glendale <coughs> Register nomination and Mills Act application. All right. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, commissioners, and guests. Um, this is regarding a Glendale Register of Historic Resources nomination and Mills Act contract for 1663 Grandview Avenue. Uh, situating ourselves in, in uh, the city here, this house is on a large lot in the El Miradero neighborhood. Uh, it is a two-story single-family residence built in 1925. The house is a fine example of the Mediterranean Revival style possibly designed by Glendale-based Robert D. Jones, who may have been the Jones in Morrison Jones, the home's builder. The house was built for John W. Lawson, former mayor of Glendale and a prominent local business executive. The Lawson family lived in the home until 1945, when their daughter Edna and her husband, baseball legend Casey Stengel, moved in and took title of the home. Charles Dillon Casey Stengel was born in Kansas City, Missouri in 1890. A distinguished young athlete, Casey was signed by the Brooklyn Dodgers in 1912. His colorful personality kept him a fan favorite through good seasons and bad. In 1924, he retired from play to become a coach and manager, and in 1948, Casey joined the New York Yankees organization. Under his management, the Yankees won seven World Series and ten AL championships, the greatest record in baseball history. Casey's shown here on the left, reclining poolside at home in Glendale. And on the right, with wife Edna at his baseball-themed home bar, which sadly no longer exists. Uh, Casey briefly left baseball to work at the Lawson's Valley National Bank in Glendale. He returned to manage the New York Mets from 1962 to 65, then retired to Glendale for good. He was inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame the next year. Casey Stangle remains one of the most famous public figures ever to call Glendale home, and thanks to Commissioner Morgan, here we see Casey and Edna being honored mm -hmm. in a local parade. Here they are being honored at Glendale's Oakwood Country Club. Oh. And after quite a life, Casey died in Glendale in 1975, and Edna passed away three years later. So according to one account, Though his career took him many places, his Glendale home and its, quote, palm trees, swimming pool, oriental furnishings, and playhouse in the garden were always awaiting his return. The house has a number of character-defining features of its style, including its two-story rectangular mass, hipped tile roof, smooth stucco walls, and multi-paned French doors and windows. The boxed eaves are supported by attractive scrolled corbels. The arch-headed paneled wood entry door, believed to be original, is flanked by detached arched side lights, and the porte cochere has segmental arched openings on each end. A simple portico with arched openings protects the front porch. It supports a small terrace at the second floor, accessed by French doors and ringed with a wrought iron railing of simple detail. The eastern side of the house includes an open-air patio, as shown on the upper left. It includes an interesting fountain with tile border, shown at bottom left. And among the home's character-enhancing features are its outdoor light fixtures that carry over the style of the ironwork found throughout the exterior of the house. 
There are several outbuildings on the site, including the garage and a building identified on permits from 1951 as a rumpus room. Both have been altered over the years. The swimming pool and tennis court, likely original features of the home, were remodeled or rebuilt in 1983. Adjacent to the tennis court is Edna Stangle's Orchard, which its current owners are in the process of painstakingly bringing back to life. In 2013, the current owners oversaw the construction of stucco-clad piers topped with light fixtures on the walkway from the driveway to the portico and the installation of a new wrought iron gate at the Port Cochere. In 2000, a two-story addition of over a thousand square feet was built at the rear of the house, shown at the bottom. The changes to the mass of the original house, as well as some awkward detailing, detract from the original character of the building. The covered patio and second floor terrace shown at top were added by the current owners in consultation with city staff in 2013. While many properties on the register feature pre-designation additions, the additions are generally more deferential to the original house and are often built closer to the original construction date. Staff believes that while this house is a handsome example of its style when viewed from the street, the large rear addition diminishes its historic and architectural integrity such that it does not qualify under Criterion 3. However, Pursuant to Section 1520.050 of the Glendale Municipal Code, staff determined that the property at 1663 Grandview is eligible for listing in the Glendale Register of Historic Resources built uh, based on Criteria 2 for its association with Casey Stengel, one of the most famous figures in the history of baseball. In conclusion, staff recommends that the Commission support the Glendale Register nomination and Mills Act contract and recommends that the house be designated as the Lawson Stengel House. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Do we have any who would like to start the discussion? I have no um, I have no parts on this item. I'll just make note. Well you, you will. The the owners oh, are present. I'm sorry. So, yeah. Okay. We'll fill um, out a card afterwards. Okay. <laughs> Please come on up. Oh. Didn't realize. No. Got a little emotional listening to the description of the home. We're just so really proud of it. Yeah. Um, I'm, so I'm, thank you for yes. considering it. Yeah, actually, in, in listening to this gentleman here talk about uh, the house that he saw raised, it did make me emotional as well. And I think that's why we're here to make sure this house uh, remains intact. It's obviously an important house to the city. And it means a lot more to be able to say Casey Stengel lived here in the city if you can actually point to the house that he lived in. So. Thank you. And I know the interior doesn't count, but um, we purchased the home two years ago, and we spent a year painstakingly restoring the interior of the home. Um, they had covered all of the original hardwood floors with some pretty gross carpeting, and um, <laughs> we ripped all that up and uh, restored all of the original floors and kept uh, all of, we had all of the light fixtures that were original um, rewired and cleaned and um, and some uh, doorknobs and things like that. We didn't replace any of the interior doors. Anything that looked original that we could restore, we did. And we even tried to change some updates that had been done over time to better reflect the original intention of the home. Um, so some updates that had been done that were clearly um, of a different time period, we uh, tried to correct those. So again, I know that doesn't matter, but we, uh, we're really proud of the home and um, we love uh, what the Stengels meant to Glendale, and um, we are trying to get that orchard back. Um, <laughs> great. Edna yeah. had a uh, grapefruit tree back there that she planted a couple because I guess she loved her greyhounds. Well, yeah, the Stengel families <laughs> reached out to us and they told us some stories that she loved uh, picking picking grapefruits out and making greyhounds, and, and, and they sent us a Are you going to restore bars. restore the baseball bat bar? Uh, <laughs> well, we faxed found one of the bats. <laughs> Unfortunately, the owners, previous owners, sold all the bats that he had put into the bar, but we are able to locate one of them oh. through an auction. And oh, cool. And we so it's in it. the house now. <laughs> it's, it's on our mantle, right. but yeah. <laughs> but it was um, the bar is was yeah. sort of destroyed. Oh, well, uh, yeah. But um, sadly, but um, yeah, the single family did contact us and gave us um, Edna's lemon pie recipe as well. I guess it's a big secret. And 
Um, yeah. mm -hmm. I guess if it passes, I'll make you one. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, I don't want that to be considered an official bribe. Right. <laughs> it's less than fifty dollars in value. We're okay. It okay, is. Okay. I think yeah. so. Yeah. The, the lemons, are the free lemons will be out in the tree. So it should be good. <laughs> no, but we're just really, really proud of the house and um, and yeah, and want to do are. everything we can to to landmark it and, and keep it how it is. Thank, thank you. you. I just want to mention thank one you. thing that we are proud of you as well, and uh, we thank you mm -hmm. for everything you do. Also, the interior of the house is important as well. I mean, if you have a Mediterranean style or a revival style house and the interior is all uh, damaged or it's all modern, it, it just doesn't go together. Uh, that's what I've been talking about from the day one. The interior is very important, and we really do appreciate everything you've done to even bring the interior back to life as well. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And I will second that. I, I did also want to say that the interior does matter. We don't have purview over the interior, um, you know, with this board. But, um, yeah, thank you for your care and custodianship of the home and everything you're doing. Well, we, we read that their guest bedroom, uh, there's a bedroom in the home, and it had, um, I guess she, would, she called it an oriental flair. She, mm -hmm. That's how it was written in her in her book that Edna <coughs> loved um, Asian decor, and so um, the hope is that we'll eventually be able to research a little bit more about what that was like. I would love my guests to be able to stay in a room as Edna might have intended, mm -hmm. with <laughs> yeah. um, all of our books and memorabilia about the Stangles we've been able to collect. Yeah. We have to figure out which room it is first. It's that <laughs> guest bedroom. Oh, it is? Yeah, it's yeah. Our it's, it's our same room that we're using as a guest bedroom was that oh, bedroom. That's good. Yeah. We have to do every house in Oriental furnishings. Yeah. <laughs> every every room. Obviously room. have a lot to keep you occupied over the years. Yeah, yes. I think so. Yes. Yeah. And we were able to save all of the trees in the orchard. When we mm -hmm. uh, purchased the home, it looked like there were some that weren't going to make it, but I think they're all going to make it, right? Oh, they're doing great now. Yeah, they're doing yeah, great. They're, and the, each fruit. year the fruit tastes better, so... Mm -hmm. Uh, that's even uh, more amazing in this drought area that we are in right yeah. now. You're, yeah, I guess I don't know what this... able to bring the trees back to life as well. So. Yeah, it yeah. is. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so with that, we'll close the public hearing and go to comments. Anybody want to start? I'll start. Commissioner Morgan. As an old historian, I I never really knew where Casey Stingle lived. We were very proud of him living in the city of Glendale. And I rode up and down Grandview, and if I had only known that Casey Stingle lived in that house, I would have more than once gone and knocked on the door. And he was just a fantastic guy, and he, like they showed in the parade, but back with the days of Verdugo, and any time he came back into town, they would, they would, the newspapers would trumpet it up and the whole bit, and it, it made everyone who lived in Glendale, especially in the 50s, and then when he took over the Mets in 62, it was just a fantastic thing. We were all very proud of him, and I'm very proud of the fact that this house, hopefully, with the rest of my commissioners, will be on the Glendale Register. Thank you. Well, I just wanted to say thank you so much for bringing uh, this before us today. It's a beautiful home, beautiful property, and this is exactly the type of... Um, home we like to see being brought forward something that'll be protected and preserved for years even after many of us are, aren't here anymore so thank you and thank you for your painstakingly way you've renovated it um, it's a beautiful home and ar architecturally the style is um, very significant uh, but I think more importantly here today is the historic person that lived there and being able to link that to your home and have all that documentation uh, so what I I would recommend you know I think supporting staff that if we can just recommend this under the historic person, then the beautiful work that the homeowners have done won't come under different scrutiny just because the addition may or may not have been done in keeping exactly like we would have requested it if it came under that criterion. Um, so I would fully support the nomination moving forward under the historic person, Casey Stengel. Okay, I, I made my comments already, but I agree with my fellow commissioners. Uh, I think what you've done, which is very noble as well, you even work with the staff to add that balcony on the, in, the, in the rear of the property to even make that a little bit uh, more digestible, if you will, uh, that addition that was done to the, to the property. And, and uh, I thank you for that as well. And uh, I fully support that. Yes, I absolutely support the, the nomination. And I think one of you mentioned 
when I was at the house that it, it had been on the market for quite a while, and I can't help but think it was waiting for you because, you know, the two of you obviously have such a strong sense of stewardship of the house and the way you talk about it and the way you're focused on the details. It's just, it's just exactly the type of thing that helps us maintain our historic fabric in Glendale. So uh, welcome to Glendale. Thank you for, <laughs> thank you for buying the house. <laughs> and uh, it looks lovely inside and out. Um, I thought about it. I, you know, I realized that the addition is not, um, what were the words that were used? It doesn't, doesn't mesh properly in terms of, um, doesn't sing along with the, uh, <laughs> Uh, the back we, we ele elevation. Work, I, you know, the way I feel scene. about it, you know, I realize that that the guidelines are the guidelines, and you know, we have to enforce them. And I'm cert I, I certainly agree with supporting the nomination based on uh, the prominence of the historical figure who lived there. But I think there are two interesting things about the house. I think characteristically, it's extremely intact and from the public right of way. It looks very, very good. Mm -hmm. So I'm very much on the fence about that in terms of just what I saw. And then that property, I mean, I have never seen a parcel like that in Glendale. I mean, it's really reflective of the heritage of the city to have that much space around it in that orchard, I think, is probably, you know, I know we're not landmarking a, a giant piece of property because in the future, like everything else, things do, do get subdivided. I'm not saying that you're going to subdivide your house, but I think that uh, that the, the layout and the footprint of the parcel is extremely significant and a reflection of old Glendale. So I probably would have thrown in criterion number, um, what is it, number four? Five. But, five. five. But I will go along with the nomination based on criterion number two, if that's the way the commission wants to play it. So thank you. Okay. And I unfortunately was unable to uh, do a site visit over the weekend <clears throat> due to some other unexpected obligations, and that's probably why I didn't realize that both of you were here. Um, but obviously um, it is a very um, important home architecturally and um, due to its association with Casey Stengel, and, and I really don't have much more to say. I, you know, thank you again for bringing it forth, and um, I would fully support um, the nomination under Criterion 2. Um, I guess my only question, Jay, and maybe I'm just having a brain cramp here. Um, if we don't nominate under Criterion 3, and there are future changes to be made. Or we, we still regulate at the same level. You regulate you know, at the same we, level, We use right? the current condition as the baseline, and then we'll use the Secretary, Secretary of the Interior Standards for ongoing. Okay. Okay, yeah, we, good. We don't, yeah, I just wanted yeah, the idea is, as much as possible, were Casey and Edna to come back to life and walk down the street Yay. and see the house, they would say, yeah, that's our place. That's our house. So. Okay. Great. Um, I would be thrilled to make a motion if we're ready. And then if I, if I could just just check, because uh, reading the nomination and the information, we thought the Lawsons were also important to the heritage of yeah. Glendale, especially because Valley National Bank is the type of institution that helped spur all of our post-war growth. Plus, Edna seemed like she was a pretty cool lady, so, yeah. so you're okay with Lawson Stengel as yes. the official name? Yes, that's fine. Okay. Okay, I move to recommend to City Council the addition of 1663 Grandview Avenue to the Glendale Register of Historic Resources and um, go into the Mills Act contract for the property. And this would be uh, due to eligibility under Criterion 2 with Casey Sting Stengel being the important historic person. And the home would be designated as Lawson Stengel House. Second. Everybody. Second. Yeah. <laughs> All together now. Who's taking credit for that? We have to keep track. <laughs> I defer. Second. Okay. Um, roll call. Uh, Commissioner Morgan? Yes. Commissioner Vidor? Yes. Commissioner D uh, Shire? Yes. Commissioner Garpedian? Yes. Uh, Chair Vartanian? Yes. It's unanimous. 5 0. So we will recommend to Council to designate and enter into a Mills Act contract. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. Yes. Congratulations. Congratulations. Okay, with that, we'll move on to item 7A. 
is 1105 Hillcroft Road within the Rosswine Historic District, legalization of installation of cast stone door surround. At a property in Rossmoyne at 1105. Oh. Uh, uh, Croft is in the Rossmoyne Historic District, not where that. The Mediterranean was built in 1926. It's a contributor. District. Oh, I'm going to start over. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> 1105 Hillcroft is in the Ross Moyne neighborhood. It's in the Ross Moyne Historic District and is a contributor to the Historic District. It's a Mediterranean Revival uh, style house uh, built in 1926. Um, the condition that you see here is the condition at the time of uh, Ross Moyne's designation in 2012. The uh, um, awnings are obviously not original awnings, particularly the awning at the front entry. Um, that awning does obscure the appearance of the front entry, which is part of what we're discussing tonight. Uh, the current owner, uh, without understanding that permits were required for this kind of work, uh, went ahead and made some, began to make some alterations to the house um, that uh, were found to be inappropriate by staff, and because no permits had been issued, the Building and Safety Department issued a violation. Um, the owner has been working in good faith with staff to uh, rectify the situation and uh, proposes to make some alterations to the work that was done um, and is also asking to legalize the cast stone surround that was uh, built around the uh, front entry. So I'll just run through a couple of the uh, features uh, that will be restorative uh, to remove the work that was done without permits. Um, let me see if I have, here, here you can see at the, this is at the time the violation was issued. Um, these cast stone surrounds at the upper level windows that you can see a little bit better here will be removed and the stucco around those windows will be returned to its original condition. Um, the, you can see over here on the right hand side there's a, a small metal balconette that we have a better photo of here, actually here. Uh, very simply detailed, it's not certain that this is an original feature to the house but it was in place at designation, does look like an older uh, feature and is also appropriate to the style of the house. These balconettes are quite common on Mediterranean revivals. What uh, the owner is proposing is to uh, keep the one at this upper right-hand window, keep the one at the upper right-hand window. The one, that, one of the ones that was removed um, is still on site and that will be replaced at the left-hand window. There was uh, one, as you see in the original photo, at the center window it turns out that that uh, prevented egress from the bedroom and building and safety has indicated that that uh, balconet cannot be replaced. So as currently proposed, balconets will be uh, located at the uh, outer windows but not the center window. Um, the awnings uh, at the upper floor will be restored but the blue color canvas uh, will be uh, replaced with a more appropriate uh, kind of brown toned canvas. Again, those are also not necessarily original features. We don't know, but we do see them on properties of this style and period, and they do seem appropriate. So staff is supporting all of this work at the second floor. Um, the, the big question for the commission is whether um, the installation of a feature like this cast stone surround is appropriate on a contributing building in the historic district. And this raises several questions of the philosophy of how, how Glendale intends to regulate its districts and what we expect in our districts. And so the Commission's opinion tonight will give some guidance um, toward that. Um, in analyzing this, staff recognize that houses of this style often do have surrounds very much like this. And when we analyzed the work in the field, we realized it was of very high quality. So we're very comfortable that the work is quality work and that it's similar to a cast stone surround that might have been installed uh, at the era of the home's construction, but we also recognize that it is an intervention. It's creating something that wasn't there historically. Um, we do think that because the look of this is appropriate to the style of the house and, and doesn't uh, appear to 
affect the overall character of the district. We also strongly believe that the presence of this surround doesn't uh, remove the house's character, or it do, it's contributing um, status within the district. Um, we're supportive of retaining this, and we do have a recommended condition to uh, looking at this. The house has a very kind of simple, relatively austere style, um, typical of, of Mediterranean revival. Uh, the kind of raised cartouche and the little half half round kind of uh, raised portion at the center of the entry um, doesn't seem appropriate to to the kind of idea of an intervention like this. So we have photoshopped in our poor Photoshop skill what it would look like if that were removed and the entry were just brought across as a straight uh, flat lintel across the opening. Uh, we do think that this is an improvement on the existing condition, and it would be recommended as a, as a, as a condition of approval if the commission is inclined to approve this uh, surround as requested by the homeowner. Finally, uh, there are three locations for light fixtures on this. Uh, there were two light fixtures originally flanking the uh, front doorway. And you can go back and see those two fixtures there. Mm -hmm. um, we can't say for sure that they're what the fixture looked like above the doorway, but I believe there was a junction box in place. Um, the owner is requesting to add to return light fixtures in those locations and has proposed uh, wrought iron fixtures that appear to be appropriate uh, to the style ultimately. Uh, he prefers the left hand example. Um, we haven't spent much time thinking about whether, you know, they, they all seem like they could be found appropriate uh, to the House and uh, leave that to the Commission if you're, if you're interested in discussing that. That concludes uh, my presentation and I can answer any questions if you've got. Thank you. Any questions for Jay at this time? Otherwise I'll go to the Not public yet. hearing. Okay. <clears throat> So the first speaker on this item is Gerard Bogosian. Good evening, Madam Chair. Good evening, Commissioners. Mr. Platt. Uh, my name is Gerard Bogosian. Um, I'm the owner of uh, 1105 Hillcroft uh, Road. A um, little bit, little background history on me, uh, pertinent background history, and I'll get to why. Um, I've been a proud resident of Glendale for over 30 years. Um, by trade, I'm a foot and ankle surgeon in the Antelope Valley. Um, I'm also the uh, medical officer for the LA County Sheriff's search and rescue team. Um, and uh, th the reason I mention these things is because I want to emphasize that my life is based on compliance. And uh, so from one misunderstanding or another, I stand here in, in front of the principal's office uh, <laughs> trying to rectify. So I do want to emphasize that, you know, my whole, at this point, the whole, the, my whole objective is to get this house back to as beautiful as I can and as compliant as I can, because, you know, that's totally out of character. Um, I just want to say really quick that in designing specifically the, uh, the uh, center applique for the house, um, the, the design team that I used, um, I have brought the owner of the company. I don't know if he'll need to talk or not because I'm pretty much going to speak for him at this point. But um, the, the design and, and uh, planning and engineering that went into this took over six months. Uh, Hercules Architectural Recre Recreations, their second generation company in Los Angeles. Um, uh, the, 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 the design team that helped design this is also responsible for renovations of the Greystone Manor, the Pickwick Manor, and uh, some consulting on the Hearst Castle. Uh, the reference pictures are extensive. Um, driving uh, in the city of Glendale and looking at all the uh, similar homes, similar, similar style homes, uh, was, uh, was uh, very important so that this change doesn't stick out like a sore thumb and that it's definitely period correct, definitely architecturally appropriate for the, uh, the, the Spanish Mediterranean, uh, Mediterranean uh, revival style of the home. And uh, lastly, the quality uh, of, of the work. Um, some of some of you all have had the opportunity to come out and look, um, and obviously, uh, uh, um, hopefully, you'll agree at least on the quality of the work. But um, uh, I understand at this point, and it's been ve made very clear that the the, the window uh, treatments are definitely um, 
a thing of the past. Uh, I'm willing to replace the balconets, um, renovate them, maybe, you know, in some new paint. They're rusted, they're old. Um, the center one is a fire code violation because there's no other escape route in that room. So regretfully, even if I wanted to, I can't put them up. As far as awnings go, the, uh, the, uh, the objective here is to basically be compliant, so to restore as much of the house back to the, uh, the pre-designated state. And uh, at this point, basically, you know, I'm, I'm here to discuss this with you, and I'm pretty much at your mercy. So I've, I've, had, uh, I've, I've submitted several letters from neighbors. Um, across the street, next door, to the right, down the street, um, they've they've uh, they've brought flowers. They've knocked on my door. They've brought wine. They've they've thanked me for taking the blue awnings out and beautifying their city. I know that's a big consideration. You know, you don't want to you don't want to have uh, uh, you don't want to have changes in a neighborhood like this or any neighborhood that's not going to bode well with your community. And that was very important. Um, I did speak to several neighbors uh, before, during the whole project. Some of my wonderful neighbors are here today. And um, that's my story. Thank you. We're not that bad. No. <laughs> not at all. I do want to say one thing, if I can. Sure. Um, as far as the recommendation of removing the applique in the center, um, just so you know before making any decision, that would be extremely destructive to the entire top portion uh, because to take that out is going to require demolition uh, because of the way it's installed by code with the uh, with the thin sets and the epoxies and the so to remove that is basically going to break out the whole the whole portion of it or probably crack a good chunk of it so thank you okay thank you for that I could just also add and have a seat um, I, I received one phone call today from a, a nearby neighbor who said that she believed that the work was not detrimental to the neighborhood and made it clear that she did not know the owner. <laughs> so so uh, we sometimes do get oral testimony like that for DRB, but I don't think we have for uh, HPC so far. So. That's fine. Well, this is an up-and-coming commission, so. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Getting well-known. Okay, my next card is from William Mardirosian. Good afternoon, committee members. My uh, name is William Mordorosian. I'm an uh, engineering manager at Parsons in Pasadena. And I've uh, been living across the street from a good doctor for 20 years at 1100 Hillcroft Road. And all along we've been wondering when and if somebody will do something about the blue awnings. <coughs> so uh, finally the doctor purchased the property and uh, started remodeling. We all got excited. and. Uh, project got stopped and we we're all just uh, wondering when it'll get going again so I'm here to the support of the doctor and his project we think it's a beautiful and classy thing he's doing to the property and the community thank you thank you and my next card is from Hercules custom furniture <clears throat> Uh, your name for the record, please. My name is Syed Kasker. I'm the uh, second generation owner of Hercules Custom Furniture, and I helped uh, Dr. Bogosian design <coughs> the facade that's on the front of the house. And we did that by going around the neighborhood, looking at different houses in the neighborhood, diff looking at different architecture in the neighborhood. Uh, we've had a lot of, uh, we've done a lot of restoration projects, uh, and one of our specialties is doing restorations, uh, 1920s, 1930s homes in the area. And a lot of emphasis was put on designing it in a way to keep it period correct for the neighborhood. And I'm also uh, a neighbor too. I live close by. I grew up in the neighborhood in the Ross Point District. That's why I just wanted to put that in. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, my next card is from Greg Grammer. Thank you. Um, on behalf of the Glendale Historical Society, I would like to strongly urge the commission to not approve the unpermitted installation of the, coast, the cast stone surround at the front entry. With the addition of the new cast stone elements, what has been eliminated is the simplicity of design and the delicacy of proportion of the original entrance embrasure. The original, as you can see from the photos, was a simple round arched plaster recess. 
As such, we respectfully request that the home's front facade be restored to its appearance at the time of the historic district's designation. The Secretary of the Interior Standards and the City's award-winning historic district design guidelines provide very clear guidance to the Commission when it comes to adherence with standard preservation practices. And our historic district guidelines explicitly state that they are to be used in conjunction with the Secretary of the Interior Standards. And according to the Secretary of the Interior Standards, quote, each property will be recognized as a physical record of its time, place, and use. Changes that create a false sense of historical development, such as adding conjectural features or elements from other properties, will not be undertaken. The historic district guidelines also make clear that the original frame of a door should be preserved. In this case, the frame of the door is the very simple, round-arched plaster embrasure in which the door is centered. The guidelines state that, quote, decorative details that help to define a historic porch, such as arched openings, should be preserved and maintained. And most importantly, and I'm taking this from page 64 of the guidelines, quote, additional porch elements should not be added if they did not exist historically. The guidelines also state that, quote, arrangement size and proportions of historic openings should be maintained. The cast stone surround added to the house did not exist historically and alters the historic profile, size, proportions, and material, not only of the historic entrance, but the entire facade. It should therefore be removed along with the surrounds added to the upper windows. In summary, we feel that the cast surround diminishes the architectural character integrity and integrity of the house, which historic districts are supposed to preserve. Thank you. Thank you. And the next speaker is Delilah Lenoir. Good evening, commissioners, neighbors. Uh, thank you for uh, allowing me to speak on behalf of my neighbor, Gary. Um, I reside at 1111 Hillcroft Road, and um, I'm just uh, to the uh, east of Gary. And uh, my husband and I bought the, bought the house in 1999, and we've enjoyed living there. We have another neighbor here, Bill, and um, we pride ourselves in our um, community within the community. Um, I would like to say um, I agree with Bill that I was so happy when someone finally bought the house because my neighbors, although very nice people, they never did anything to the house. And I can't remember when I moved in in 1999 if those god-awful blue awnings were there or not. So um, all, I, all I do remember is that, uh, you know, the, the very stark blue color and that it doesn't really add anything. Now, in terms of the, um, the arch way, um, my house has a limestone surround. My, my home is a uh, Spanish a colonial revival. And it does have a, um, a limestone <clears throat> surround uh, with a, a crest at the very top. So um, with that said, um, I believe that this is a, a very beautiful addition. And um, I would uh, implore you to um, reconsider and um, allow um, Gary to, to keep it. And as we would all be very happy. Thank you. Thank you. So what was your address again? 1111. 1111? Mm hmm Thank you. Okay, that was my last card, so we'll uh, close the public hearing and go to discussion amongst the commissioners. Anybody want to start? Yeah, I have a question for Jay. Uh, I think this is going to come up almost every other time, and I wanted to know what is your response to Mr. Grammer's uh, comments as far as uh, the surrounds should not be there at all? It's not even permitted to add surrounds with or without permits. It's ultimately kind of a policy decision where the city's on an, going to, on an ongoing basis determine how we want change to be regulated in our historic districts. Clearly, this does not meet the Secretary of the Interior stand one, the one standard that, uh, that Mr. Grammer mentioned. I, I accept that. It's clear that it doesn't meet that. And that's where the commission comes in. The commission is able to approve things that do not meet the commission or meet the secretary's standards. And it is going to become a judgment call whether we can accept changes in our historic districts that may riff off of the style that was there 
And I do think that there is a difference between contributing structure in a historic district and a Glendale Register property and the way that we would use the Secretary of the Interior standards with much greater um, strictness for a Glendale Register property. The reason we have the guidelines, which are indeed based on the, on the Secretary's standards, is to, is to kind of give guidance. And the reason this is with the Commission is because staff couldn't clearly and easily make a decision that this was appropriate. Um, but like I said, the Commission does have the power to step beyond the guidelines or the Secretary of the Interior Standards for that matter, and that's clearly written into the Historic Preservation Ordinance, which doesn't apply to historic districts, it applies to Glendale Register properties. But, it, but the implication is that it would exist in a district as well. If you, oh, go ahead. No. No. I just, I just had a follow up on that, if you all don't mind. And I think we're looking at um, number three of the Secretary of the Interior Standards for Re Rehabilitation. I think that was the uh, each property shall be recognized as a physical record of its time, place, and use. Right. Is that what you were reading? Changes that create a false sense of historical development such as adding conjectural features or architectural elements from other buildings. I just wonder if that means, you know, you have a Victorian down the street and you like the, the, uh, the scroll work at the front and you take it and put it on your building, or how do we, how do we that, read that? That's kind of where those are coming from. These, these standards are now um, 77 whatever that is, 40-some years old. Um, they're, they're based on kind of a different mindset, and this is something that comes up for me in my classes a lot, where it's a bunch of modernist-trained architects in the 50s and 60s formulating the kind of ultimate policies that became the standards, and that, that's become really evident in the standard 9 and 10, especially where new additions have to be differentiated from the historic which in many people's minds for decades was, okay, we have to put a glass hyphen or a glass box or do something strikingly different to uh, set this apart. Um, there's new thinking about how the secretary standard should be interpreted, and there, that thinking allows additions to be much more reflective of the earlier style. And by additions, I'm not talking about an alteration like this, but an actual volumetric addition. Um, so, so what this tells me is that, you know, the philosophy behind preservation is in constant flux and there's going to be changes over the years. Um, but I, I don't personally believe that this, this project meets standard three, but I don't think that necessarily means that it shouldn't be approved because I think it's, it's appropriate to the style of the house. It's not going to damage its uh, status as a contributor in the district and ultimately You'll, 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 you'll make that determination, and then staff is going to be learning as we move forward, you know, what, where does the commission want this to go? Ultimately, city council may be weighing in on this. Um, but we definitely have a difference of opinion in terms of whether change should be allowed on visible facades in historic districts. And I believe that preservation is about managing change, not preventing it. That's my underlying philosophy, and I tend to be somewhat liberal as a preservationist. There are plenty of other people who are much, much stricter, more conservative as preservationists. I think that when the city established historic districts, I don't think we went into this with the idea that properties weren't going to visibly change. We even have provisions to allow additions. Staff can approve additions of, over, of up to 200 square feet visible from the street as exemptions. Now, that's never going to happen in a historic district as long as I'm here, but that's that's still in the books. So there's a recognition that houses and buildings are going to change over the years. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you for that. Sorry, uh, Commissioner Vidor, I interrupted oh. you. Okay. Well, I'll go ahead then. Um, certainly. Well, thank you all for being here today. And um, I realized after you spoke, um, I can't remember your name, the gentleman from the built from the contractor's office, um, that I wondered if you recognize that you needed a permit and whether, you, you know, if you advised your client, you're not the contractor, the designer, okay. Um, so you were serving as your own contractor, okay. Um, you know, this is an eclecticism is definitely um, part of our heritage in Southern California and, um, but 
you know, whether a house is eclectic or a pure architectural style, it still has its own unique defining features. And in this particular house, even though it was kind of closely obscured by the gigantic awning, which, um, you know, color or not color, an awning can be taken off. And I'm, you know, glad you took it off because the defining feature, which is that door and its deep recess, uh, was really uh, what, you know, a very important element of that house. And you see that feature all over the place on Mediterranean Spanish and Spanish houses and uh, that, you know, protective from the elements and bringing the door in and the stucco surrounding it. And um, I have seen some situations uh, mentioned in the guidelines where houses with surrounds are sited and there are exam exemplary pictures of some of those. But first of all, I think that a, defi a major defining feature of this home and a very prominent one was, for lack of a better word, violated by putting up this surround. And the surround is very disproportional to the basic design of the door and its recess. Um, if there were to be a surround, um, in a, on a door like this, the types of surrounds that you see uh, depicted in the guidelines, which follow the shape of the door, you know, there are these rusticated ones where you have these stones that stick out, and then there are tile ones, and there are all kinds of designs for surrounds, but they respect the shape and form of the recess of the door and the shape of the door. And um, I just feel personally like this does not meet uh, the essence of the guidelines. It doesn't meet the spirit of the design of the house, and um, it should be removed. And the original door surround and recessing should be brought forward as they were originally. So I would um, be in favor of that. And the same for the windows, which I believe you're going to be correcting. That's my opinion. Okay. <clears throat> I'll go next. Uh, first of all, thank you for coming before us today, and thank you for coming with a humble attitude. It's appreciated. Um, I know it's not fun to be here in this situation. <clears throat> um, I'll address the easiest things first, and then we'll move towards the entry. Um, first of all, I appreciate you taking off the window trim, because I think that's definitely not something in keeping with the Spanish um, colonial revival style. It is made of very simple architecture with beautifully washed walls with um, very selectively punched opening of different sizes to create that, you know, kind of uh, balance and really asymmetrical balance you always see on um, these types of homes. The very narrow slender window to the left of the door, uh, which is now being crowded. Um, but I think that this, um, Oh, sorry, I'm going to go easiest first. Let's go to the ironwork next after the window treatments are going to be removed, the window trim. The ironwork, I think, is important to be there because that's, again, another element of this type of architecture. And it's really unfortunate when things are done without permits and now we have absolutely no way to even put them back because of now a new code or something that would have been grandfathered in, was grandfathered in, and now there's no way to revive that back. And so. To me, that's a tragedy that we, like I say, we can never recover from. I understand codes and we need to move forward, um, but that's unfortunate that now we don't even have the opportunity to put some beautiful ironwork back that was there for, you know, almost 100 years or so. Um, so I would like the ironwork to be put back on the windows that we can. I just wanted to make a note that it's unfortunate we can't have all the iron back. Um, as relates to the awnings, I'm fine with those going back in a more appropriate color. Um, that's not a problem for me. Um, the entry is, um, in my opinion, not at all appropriate for this style home or this architecture. Its scale is wrong. Its massing is wrong. Is wrong. Um, in the in the homes that were cited, which I did take a careful look at and went by each one. Um, when you do have some kind of decorative element surround, it's put on the house from the beginning so that the whole design across the whole facade, it, there's flow and rhythm. 
And in this home, this that's all you see now when you look at the home, and that might have been the intent, but that's not typically the um, design of this type of a home, and definitely not in the 20s and 30s. And so, um, oh, so typically those elements would be uh, really stand, stand alone with enough vacant space in walls around it that it was appropriate. So if you look at the one I think you mentioned, on the, it's really on the corner of like Cortez and Rossmoyne. Um, if you notice that one, it still has beautiful amount of space around it. It's a very romantic in shape and style and edging. And it's got tiny little detail up above, maybe one small window that really has enough space to handle that type of an entry. I feel like we're putting an entry of that scale and grandeur on a house that has a large window and has different rhythm and isn't allowing the window to be what it wants nor this new entry facade surround to um, to have enough room. It's also crowding the window to the left which is in my opinion very inappropriate. Um, the light fixtures now are going to be squished to be back where they once were because you're trying to fit them on that facade and um, I think overall this takes the home in a direction that it was not meant to be originally and um, in my opinion really diminishes from the architectural um, beauty of the entry, the simple um, arch, the simple kind of concave entrance and I don't want to take anything away from the craftsmanship of the designer to the implementation of the construction. Uh, for me it's just the entire design. I, I, can't, I can't get past it. I don't feel it's um, the right approach so um, I would like for the entire thing to be removed and stucco back as it once was. Thank you. Everybody? I have to concur with Mike. Mike, Mike. Mike, yes. Anyway, uh, I have to concur with my fellow commissioner so far. It, it takes the house in a whole different vein than what the house originally was. Um, I'm not really bothered by the way it looks, but I just don't think it's appropriate for the house itself. I wished that it had, it had come before us before you did all of this work. I, I like the work itself, but um, there are just certain things that uh, I just don't feel it's even though you've done a lot of work, it's just appropriate for the house. It, when I look at it and compare it to what it was, it's a whole different massive entry that uh, the house originally didn't have. And uh, unfortunately, I'm, we have to set guidelines that are real, and unfortunately, I don't feel that this one is appropriate for the house. Okay, thank you. Um, I agree with some of the the comments my colleagues made, I think that the surrounds around the windows, they, they're, they're not appropriate at all. Uh, but the issue we have here is not either this design is appropriate or not, it's the issue is our guideline in, guidelines indicate that you cannot have any kind of surrounds based on our, uh, the standard of uh, interior, uh, Secretary of the Interior Standards that you cannot add any surrounds to the historic district even for the contributors. That's what, that's what I'm hearing right now. Uh, so to me, this, the details around the door would have been acceptable, especially if it's square. It goes more with the windows, so it will pop that door out. You can see the doors, the arc, and the detail. But as it is right now, I, I don't know if we can even approve this project the way it is. Even if they remove all the surrounds and reinstall the window, uh, the, the iron railing and the, the awnings, because of our guidelines, it doesn't doesn't allow us to, to do so. That's that's the way I, I interpret it. That's way, that's that's what I understand from what they're saying here. That even if it's in a it's a contributor and you want to add any kind of surrounds to it or details around the windows, you you cannot do it. Am I correct or am I wrong? Uh, 
You're correct for staff, but not for the commission. The commission is able to approve things on a case-by-case -case basis when it feels they're appropriate. Um, the commission is not bound by the guidelines. The guidelines very clearly were written with the words should rather than shall. Um, the reason this is at the commission, and believe me, I'm conflicted here. I understand all of these issues, but the, uh, but the reason it's here is because we could not approve it because we didn't feel it met the guidelines and the standards. I can, what, what I was talking about before is I can see an interpretation. I can see how the commission could make a decision to uh, find this appropriate, but it's important for the commission to remember that you're not bound by pretty much anything. You have, you have authority to go beyond if you, choose, if you think it's appropriate in a certain case. Are you? Oh. I, I think as an applicant, uh, that puts me in a kind of a compromising position because if based on staff's uh, opinion, this is largely in keeping with traditional Mediterranean revival surrounds, uh, and it can be found appropriate to the to the house and the and the district. If that's if I come file an application, I want to get a permit, and the staff uh, recommendation is or staff's opinion is that this is uh, in keeping with the with the with the neighborhood and the style. Then what do I do after I pull my permits and install it, and I get challenged, or I get appealed after I after I install it? The the issue we have here, there are two issues in hand, I think. One is that the work was done without permit that we all have an issue with. I mean, if, if this came to you, we may not have been here today. None of us would have been here. But the other issue is even if I pull permit and uh, get the job done, then after that, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm being challenged, uh, then what happens at that time? Uh, we, we can talk about that hopefully in October when we talk about our process. But uh, the answer is uh, staff level approvals can't be appealed. So a situation is a, it's a live and learn situation and the historical society would complain to the director and to council and we would hear back and say, oh my God, we made a terrible mistake. Okay. But, but, we, but if a permit is legally issued by the city, we can't go back and then, and then take it back. So. Okay. All right, thank you. Okay. But, but I think what we're seeing here, here today, the, Jay, that what you said is, if something comes before for a permit, then it involves you, and we'll talk more about the process, but then in something like this that is, you know, something that's concerning or you don't feel a staff level could be approved, then it would come here. So we probably would have seen this to give input prior to any permit being issued had it been, had it followed the process. Okay. Anything substantially changing, I would hope the street facade. Of yeah, the home. you know, a corollary is going is is also. It hasn't come up since I've been here, but if we think about a Spanish colonial house that has a lovely entryway, um, it's very common for people to run tile around that entryway as a as a later addition, and we've seen it and we've seen changes like that on houses that the commission has voted to put on the Glendale Register, non-original tile work being seen as appropriate and acceptable. Um, it's a similar issue here, and and I'm not sure. No one, no one has come to me and said, "Can I put tile around my Glendale Register front doorway?" My sense is that I would say no, and we would have to come to the commission. If someone came and asked if they could do that on a contributing structure in a historic district, I, I'm not exactly sure where I would be on something like that because it is something that's so common and and something the commission has seen before. So I have some background to to see that it's been seen as appropriate. Ultimately, we're, we're going to be learning as we do more, I think I keep saying this, but as we do more design review as a commission and as staff in our historic districts, um, we're going to be fine-tuning and, and reflecting community concerns, but also concerns of property <coughs> owners and trying to find a balance. Well, and to the point of fine-tuning, and, and my point is always education, and I'm just I'm just going to mention before I give my comments that I'm just sorry that you, you may not have known you live within a historic district and that there are guidelines. And I think that's part of our challenge as a community um, is to continue to educate, you know, our neighbors and our neighborhoods and, and help people understand um, 
what living in a historic district means. Um, that said, I, um, I do agree that the stone around the windows um, does not belong there, and so that issue has already been resolved. Um, I'm very sorry that, uh, as Commissioner or Shire pointed out, that the um, balcony at the center window, uh, because of codes, will not be reinstalled. Um, sorry, we've lost an original uh, architectural detail. Um, but personally, um, I do not find the stone surround inappropriate, and I'm not having a problem with it. Um, I think as the staff report reads for Mediterranean Revival Homes, um, in many cases, entryways are highlighted um, by decorative entry surrounds that become um, the focal point of the facade. That said, I understand that this isn't original to the home, and so um, there's some contention to it being added now. I, I believe the purpose of adding it is at some level to elevate the front of the home. And so that level of elevation, I think, was not uncommon during the period. And so my question is, do I ponder if the, the original um, builders of the home might have wanted a stone surround and simply couldn't afford it? I, you know, it was probably an expensive detail. Um, so what I'm getting at is I don't think that surround is inappropriate to a Mediterranean style home. I also tend to read the guidelines a little more um, liberally in certain cases and because I don't find this objectionable. Um, the guidelines, as has been mentioned, do say that alterations or improvements that, um, sorry, um, the guidelines are a tool that encourage high quality, historically compatible alterations or improvements that reflect the established character of the neighborhood. I don't think this entry surround um, detracts from the character of the neighborhood. In fact, um, there is a home on Cortez known as the Nibley Home, the home of the developer of the district. Um, a home on the corner of Rosswine and Cortez that was mentioned that has also a very elaborate door. In fact, compared to these surrounds, this is not elaborate at all. Um, Royal and Mountain has a very elaborate surround, um, and those are just a few examples that I can think of immediately within the neighborhood. Um, no, and just, again, yeah, go ahead. Okay, just for, for background and, and referring back to something from uh, TGHS comments, um, a lot of Mediterranean revivals have porticos, like a projecting covered porch. And so I didn't look at this as a portico. I, I looked at it as a door surround. Um, and, and then it's important to, you know, it's, it's, it's a minor point right now. So a portico is convex, not concave. No. Well, <laughs> portico has a roof. Basically, okay. it's kind of a freestanding, partially, partially attached um, structure with a roof that really provides a covered porch, uh, which is kind of different than a door surround like these. But. Well, and again, I don't think, I mean, if we're looking at, and I'm going to call it concave, I don't know what the more formal term might be, but the way that the door, you know, the entry and the door kind of it works. moves in mm -hmm. is you know, has a depth, and I, I don't think, again, this surround is taking away from that at all. In fact, it's following the lines of that um, entry pattern for me. Can you flash back to the home, I mean, the original picture, or at least at the time of, yeah. just for, it'd be nice to see them side by side in, in future mm -hmm. presentations. Okay. I could do that quickly if you, if you really want. Okay. You, you can see you can see here the area. It's pretty clear to me that, and part of this is speculative, but it's clearly the same smooth stucco. It does have the pretty much the same concave shape, and I, I have to imagine that this just simply went up and came back down the other side, and and was a pretty simple recessed opening. And I think if you look at the the distance between the top of the awning to the bottom of the railing, it's pretty much the same as 
what we have right now. Maybe a little bit less right now, but mm. because the window, if they remove that, uh, the, the bottom seal of the upper window, mm -hmm. they will still have some distance. I know it's a little bit taller than maybe it should have been, but the top portion when it's square, I think it's, it's emphasizing the, the curve on the door and it's matching the window window styles. Just can, can you flash back to the previous this again? So I think what we when we're talking about a historic neighborhood and the, and the, those contributing structures, typically in in you know Spanish um, colonial architecture, the the entire facade is a rhythm of harmony and like I say, asymmetrical balance. You've got two windows on the lower left, you've got three on the right. You've got a small little sliver window to the left of the door, nothing on the right. You've, you know, you've got that extra window cut on the top right, and, and it's this balance and the space around the windows and the, the vacant wall space is critical to the face of the house where the windows are just beautifully, you know, punched openings or almost eyes into the house. So you go to the new, so you look at this home and it's just a beautiful facade and your eye goes many different places and you get to enjoy the architecture and the varying sizes and shapes of the windows. You go to the, the renovation, all you see is entry. And it's crowding the window above it. And the scale is too wide and it's too tall and it's so grand. Now the house, had you had another three or four feet to the second story above the facade detail to the window, you know, could this be a little more appropriate? Well, maybe, but right now it's taking up all that beautiful vacant space that is so common to uh, the style architecture and so important to uh, a contributing structure in the neighborhood and that's what I can't get past and I don't want to continue to lose that beautiful rhythm and harmony of homes in our district and um, but I looked at it very neutrally I don't just go with a guideline and say well it says you can't add anything around your house you can't add tile you can't add this it's let me look let me do research let me see when it's when it's done in, on original homes what does it look like is is that scale still there is romantic edges still there um, is it appropriate? Can my eye still float around the facade and enjoy the beauty of the um, different things going on rather than just zooming into one grand focal point? And, and I think that's yeah, why... And you're I, presuming the awning, the bubble not awning. Not the awning, there. yes. <laughs> the awning, I, I picture the awning not there at all when I look at the house. <laughs> um, I'm, I can easily do that. But I think in the new, it's it just it detracts. I... And again, I, I know we all have difference of styles and different design preferences, and so I don't want to take away anything from the owner or the designer. Um, I just think this would have needed to be done on a three-story house and a little wider in room if you really want to add something like that, and I think that's probably why the original architect didn't put it. So I think the homes we're also looking at, we have to keep in mind, the surrounds were original to those homes. They weren't added on, and therefore we can help justify this one. It's like, no, that's the whole beauty of the facade was designed all at one time together. So if we're going to be adding anything in the future, I think we have to be really careful about the scale and the massing and the shapes and how the entire rhythm of the, of the facade, how it changes that, and is that something we want to accept in our historic So And histories. I hear we should be adding a third story here to... <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> That's another discussion. <laughs> so it's I, not allowed. So I, I appreciate all of the comments that you make. I really do uh, in terms of how we, you know, we might expect um, the facade of a Spanish revival or our or Mediterranean to read. Um, and again, just to reiterate personally, I, I don't find this um, an uncommon entryway. I would probably differ with the opinion that the architect didn't put that type of a surround on this home um, because it didn't fit. I'm, in my perspective, I have to question economic feasibility. I mean, you know, I, I don't know if it was a custom build or if it was built as a spec. Um, but obviously, I'm, I'm sensing that my opinion is. Um, 
a lone opinion up here today. Actually not. <laughs> Actually, you make, you make good points. So I've, are you thinking twice about I it? I am thinking twice about it. My biggest problem is he didn't go get a permit. I mean, this isn't something that you could just say, well, I, I didn't think that I would have to go to the city or anything else. I could just do this in the front of my house. That's my problem with it. It's not that I don't find it interesting. I do think it's a little bit too massive. But, um, and I would uh, agree. I think probably if it came before this body, it might have been scaled down a little bit. I still don't find it that objectionable. I have one question for Jay. Can you go back to the, uh, the picture that you had, the Photoshop one that you creatively? You're using that word loosely. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah, see, uh, if, if this one didn't have the surrounds on the windows on top, that would have made a difference. So never mind. Well, the surround on the top is going away. No, I understand that. We could, you could visualize it better if, if it wasn't there. Can and you magically... Uh, beyond, beyond today's <laughs> Photoshop time limits. So. Well, I think we have to be careful, too, about compromising our standards just because we're in a position where the, the owner decided not to get a permit yeah. and being sensitive to what it might cost them or not. or you know. So I think we need to evaluate... If this is what we would approve today, coming before us brand new, then we vote to keep it. If this is not something at any level that we would approve, then we can't approve it. I can say with no hesitancy that I, 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 I apologize, but I have no concerns about the owner's expense at this point in time. And so um, I, I you know, hold my feelings about this architectural detail. Are you ready? I can make Someone a motion. motion. Someone would like to make a motion. Okay, I'd like to make a motion regarding the property at 1105 Hillcroft Road to, or that we request the owner to put back the ironwork that was once on the house that is deemed, as far as we can tell, to be original that the window surrounds and trim is removed and the stucco is put back to its original condition and that the entry facade around the door is removed in its entirety and the stucco is put back to its original. Second. Okay. Roll call, Commissioner Morgan. I'm going to defer for the second. Right. Uh, Commissioner Vidor? Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, what, what does it mean? The, the motion is to deny the legalization, basically. Yes. So yeah, the yes is the correct vote. So. If you want uh, to deny. If you the motion to is deny. to deny a yes means yes. you want to yes. deny. I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't, what, was, what was Mr. Morgan's vote? He's waiting to... I'm waiting. I can see it on both sides. I can see it with oh. our chairperson and... Okay, so we have one uh, vote to deny the legalization from Commissioner Vidor. Uh, Commissioner Shire? Yes. Deny. Commissioner uh, Garpedian? No. No. And Commissioner Morgan? <sighs> and by no, you mean you approve the work as it stands? Not the strong. We, we would need a new motion. Okay, then that's a, no, that's a, you should vote yes if you don't want the surround. If you want to remove the surround. He wants a modification. Oh, you, oh, you. Uh, so he's voting no on this motion. I see, got it, got it. Yeah, I take it. Okay. I should assume. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. You don't agree with the motion. You don't agree with the motion. Right? question. No, I don't agree with the motion to remove all the surrounds, but if this motion goes through, it goes Actually, through. To, to be honest, this, this was noticed just as a legalization of the doorway surround because we had already worked out at staff level oh, that okay. the owner would be Remo or restoring everything else back. Okay. So if we could frame the motion just as a motion to either Remove. legalize as built or to not legalize, that not. might be more clear. The motion yeah. on the table is to not legalize the entry surround. So can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. So he's saying that he wants a will say no to the denial, but he wants a modification. 
but that's not. We, is we, that? We but that's not on what's on the table. Not here. what's on the table. So no. the vote has to be based on the motion that's on that's the table. That's exactly what so I said. The, the motion on the table, just for clarification purposes, is to deny the legalization of the entry surround. Right. Which will that's the return because she included everything in one pot, and I was I was agreeing to half of it, not the other half. Now the mm -hmm. motion changed, or. Oh, Just I, I, I had a misunderstanding. Would you like to withdraw your motion? Yes, and I will withdraw the motion. Okay, then. I will submit a new motion. Commissioner Garpedian, or a new motion, okay. If that's acceptable, may sure. I submit a new motion? Yes. So the motion is to, for property at 1105 Hillcroft Road to deny the legalization of the current entry surround. You know, I think, sorry, if I may, on... Page one of our report, we have um, several possible outcomes. Do we pick one of those? For example, number three, um, remove the work and restore that portion of the property to its appearance at the time of the historic district's designation or to another appearance deemed appropriate by the commission. That will be the result of a denial of the legalization. Well, we want to be specific. Mm -hmm. I think. Yes, yeah, so I did write it this way. The owner will obtain a... So if you went with option one, that would mean that you found as built to be appropriate, and you would vote for that. Um, option two uh, was included to give room to modify any aspect of the work, whether it's modifying the surround, or if the commission thought the window surrounds at the second floor were appropriate, you could uh, include those. Option three is to <coughs> deny all of the work and to bring it back to its condition before the work began. So are you choosing option three? That's a result of motion. denying the legalization yeah. is everything would be returned back. Right. Commissioner Shire's motion is the same as based option on the three. Motion. Okay. So with that, do we have a second? Second. Okay. Roll call. And I always go in this order. I know. <laughs> Commissioner Morgan? I'm going to have to defer for the moment. Okay. Commissioner Vidor? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Shire? Yes. Mr. Gorpedian? No. Uh, Chair, uh, actually, we wait for Commissioner Morgan. Oh, man. <laughs> and so if I... There could be another if this doesn't pass. There could be another. If, another if, motion. if this if this, and, if this passes, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we we go with the first motion that we hear, and we see it if we get traction on that. It either passes or it doesn't pass. If right. we don't get a second, pass, that's when the motion another, dies, we can right? And then we can make, yeah. entertain another motion. No. No. And uh, Chair Vertonian? No. So the vote is to approve the as-built condition with the caveat that the upper window surrounds will be removed, the one balconette will be that, restored. That is not the vote. I don't believe. I have three no's and two yeses. But it was to legalize. Don't we have to do a vote to... It was to deny everyone... Deny it to deny the legalization. We denied the legalization. So, so that did not pass. But now there's no motion as to what what we're doing. What we're doing. That is very true. <laughs> very very true. Let's hear a second, a third motion. Mr. Morgan, since you deferred last time, would you like to make a motion? I'm at a quandary on this one. <laughs> I mean a. Can you go back to the original photo for a second? Yeah. To the designation photo? I mean, we, yes. I think we can also consider if I think some of you are having an issue with the surround at all, that we can also consider um, changing the size of the surround. You so choose. Uh, we, we, uh, just, we? just parliamentary procedure wise, if there's kind of an impasse and the chair wants to make a motion, you can pass the gavel. That's true. Make a motion. Would you pass the gavel and make some <laughs> suggestions, please? I'd like to hear what you have to say. Well, I think I'm the only one who's 
who's okay with um, the legalization of the project not as is. I think we need to have a little more discussion from the people who are kind of somewhere on, on the fence. Is, is that because you're thinking that a modification to the as-built condition is something that would help you, or are you still just not sure if you feel you could either support the work as built, but you're not ready to deny it either? Am I, I think that's, yes. Ultimately, we have to kind of step beyond that and make yes. the decision. Yeah, because, Mike, I heard you earlier saying that the facade was to was not in scale or appropriate it, mass. I don't feel it is. So you may want to just follow your heart with wherever <laughs> that leads you. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm really troubled with the fact that it, he didn't get the permits. This, no, this ultimately, is, the, the, put the, the, per, put the, the permits aside for a second. Punishment yeah. is handled yeah. in another place. Meaning it's a different topic. The, the house is before us today to approve this design. You, do you like it or don't you? Would we approve this today? Would we not approve this today? That's, I think, let the permits, that's neither here nor there. They're either going to pay penalties or I guess they will either way. <laughs> I don't I know. I think what, what would have helped us was to have another photo with just the entry surrounds, with the balcony on the left-hand side, with the new awnings, and all the surrounds on the windows removed. That would give us the, the final, basically, if, if it come to us today, that's how we will have come to us, with, with no surrounds, with, with both awnings, with different colors, and we could have just said yes or now we have to guess a little bit. Well, the, 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 just like with the design review board, there's an expectation on the city's part that the expertise of the seated board or commission can take, take us through that visualization and, and still determine what's appropriate. Um, it would be a shame to have to hold over a hearing just to have a photo kind of... I take that seriously, and, right. and we'll, we'll remember that for future uh, I mean, items we, like this. And I'm just going to say, if you don't mind, I, the, the awnings are they're highly reversible. So if anybody's getting hung up on awnings... Uh, well, I, yeah. let's, let's, be, let's be clear, though, Jay. I think you mentioned that Although in your report we, you were updating us on ironwork and awning, that's not on the table today. We are only determining well, entry surround or all, what? All, to be honest, the, the, that was my focus was on the surround because we had worked with the applicant to he has mm -hmm. voluntarily agreed to remove the other yeah. things. Technically, because the violation was issued for the work that we see here, um, it would be, for example, like I said, facetiously, if the commission thought the upper window surrounds were appropriate, you theoretically could approve those tonight. So, so I, do, I do think, I probably misspoke, I do think you can take all of the aspects of the work into account. Okay, so the first motion I made was accurate. First motion reflected <laughs> option three in the staff report, remove the work and restore that portion of the property to its appearance at the time of designation. So we're here today then to evaluate if the design as proposed, awnings, iron put back, and that existing facade, if we would approve that today as brand new design coming before us, as an improvement to a historic home in the Ross Moyne Historic District, and that we would celebrate these changes being made by the owner. Only the doors around. I well, the rest comes with it. Well, I would be happy to comment on that. I think I, I know if this came in as a proposed change, I would um, come, I would either, if, if a change was on the table and we were evaluating the appropriateness of a change, as opposed to whether or not it should be there or not, I would say that it was dis disproportionately large, that it violated the arched recess doorway and the flow of the defining features of the house and the front facade by its size and the placement of the medallion at the top, um, but also mostly because of the appearance of the surround looking as if it belongs, it doesn't belong on the house. And I would defer to some of the surrounds 
for similar houses that are depicted in the guidelines that follow the form of an arched recessed Spanish doorway. And I would make extensive recommendations about changing that. So my answer would be no, I wouldn't approve it as it is. May I show a photo to Mr. Morgan a minute or to the commission? This is the home on um, Cortez and Rossman. If you want to take a look at just how that entry um, facade is in balance with yes. the house due to. Could you tell me where that is so we can just pull it up? I think it oh, a photo? that's a good idea. Yeah. I took but it this it morning. What do you mean? <laughs> I'm going to pull it up on That house Google. doesn't have Cortez a window. Cortez and Rossmoyne? Oh, mm -hmm. On top of this I think it's one, two, three, no, zero. Which is Ross also why it's so nice and balanced and appropriate. Right. This it is, I don't, this gives an example of no, I, I, why you still, yes, yeah. I, I don't. Yes, this is well, well, most out. of the surrounds that I referred to, I, oh, I would consider right. them very elaborate. Yes, That's the one we're looking at in the photo, well, and the one you're going to see space. right now. Elaborate in detail. Elaborate in as detail. As opposed to scale. This is this is the property, Commissioner Shire. Don't that I have up. Yes. Well, yeah, that is a much bigger home. But I'm saying when you have a facade like like this in this example, you still have the beautiful, you know, white washed walls with appropriate size and scale from an entry to the vacant area around it. And you still have, you know, you, your, your eye can go from one end to another and enjoy the elements without it being so bold and so large around the entry and crowded to an upper window as we have in the condition we're um, considering tonight. I'll give you an example of some of the things that were contrasted were, this to me seems appropriate. Now, of course, this is also original, but you have the opportunity to design it. This seems just, I just glance at that, it just seems like an eyesore, just doesn't seem the right scale, look, feel to that beautiful rhythm. It just interrupts it from vertically, horizontally, corner to corner. You lose what this house was designed and meant to be from the 1920s or 30s, at the year it was built. Look at. I'm not sure if I have the address right. Ten, ten, Cortez. Is it eleven o? Yeah. yeah. That's the one. Is this it? These bushes. I think it's 10. No, no. Which one are you looking? No, 10, 11, Cortez. 10, 11. No, the public can't see. Well, I have a photo of that one, too, if you want to see it. 10, 11, Cortez. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, this is 10, 10. Up the hill here. Yes, but you have to go around the corner to the front. This way? You have to make a right. <laughs> at the stop sign. <laughs> okay. This. You gotta actually. Yeah, you gotta go right. You gotta yeah, go the on, opposite hold on. direction. This is, uh, not helping us right now. Okay, Cortez. No, don't go up there. Go keep don't going go to there. the left. There. Down here. You gotta go to the end of the to the stop sign. Turn right. Turn right. <laughs> It's 1011. Yeah, 1011. Mm. 10, 11, yeah. But it's the front side. Actually, the front of the house, the, the official front of the house is on the alleyway. Are we going for the Nibley house right now? Yes, we are. Okay. Yes, that's Why don't I just do it the way that's easiest? <laughs> Computer is giving us some trouble. I think the Nibley House has a portico, if I'm not mistaken, rather than a surround, but I can't say yes. for sure. That's what he was referencing earlier. Yes. Okay, okay, it's right here. It's this house here, so we'll bring our little human being. We'll see if Google came to the alley. Very, very impressive. 
There's a familiar house. Yeah, it's right. oh, okay. a portico. Yeah, it's okay. a portico. This is a, this is a porta surround. Porta surround. Porta round. It's a hybrid. <laughs> yes. Um, I, if I could encourage the commission to, you know, we we could entertain a, the same motion and see if uh, Commissioner Shire and Commissioner Vidor's comments have gained traction with their colleagues, or we could entertain a new motion from someone who voted no on the previous uh, vote. Oh, I'll make a motion. You, uh, before you make a motion, can you reopen the, the public hearing? I want to ask a question from the... Sure, I will reopen the public hearing. The owner. And uh, can the owner please come forward? Thank you. Um, tough question, but w what... What were you trying to achieve by by designing the, the the entrance that way? Well, I mean, in my opinion, beautification was definitely part of the process. Um, a lot of the uh, well, I want to add that the entire uh, arch and contour and concavity of the entrance was completely preserved. Um, you know. The awnings had to go. There were holes all over the stucco. It was cracked and broken. And, uh, you know, with, with, with my experience of historic homes and, and uh, collecting antiques from around the world and so on and so forth and visiting castles and so on, it, my, my goal was to beautify that house without destroying it. And therefore, the door frame was not touched. It's the original door frame. It's the original door um, and the windows and everything structurally was left the same. For me, it was just kind of highlighting that, that, that elevated arch, um, which, from my experience, the uh, Mediter Mediterranean Revival Homes do have an elevated front door. Um, and again, you know, uh, as far as proportions and dimensions go, in my opinion, that's a matter of opinion because we have reference photos of over five or 600 uh, Italian, Spanish, and Mediterranean revival uh, s stone surrounds, and there is no one specific rule. So I do want to add that. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any other questions for the owner? Okay, the public hearing is closed, and I guess I'll just note that, as Jay just said, the the entryway on the Nibley House is a porta surround. <coughs> yes. So please. we we don't always have definite styles and. Maybe definite criteria. So I'd like to make a motion. Mm -hmm. I'd like to make a motion to remove the work and restore the entry to its um, original state at the time of designation as it's a contributing structure in a historic district. Without the bubble awning. Without the awning. Someone could construe it. <laughs> okay, do we have a second? Second. And roll call when you're ready. Roll call. Should I change the order? Yeah, why not? <laughs> Commissioner Vidor? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Shire? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Garpedian? Yes. And Commissioner Morgan? Yes, then. It's, it's, it's after looking at the pictures. We can, we can deliberate afterwards. It's just... Commissioner Vertanian? No. It's quite a turn of events. And we have a 4 0 vote to deny the legalization. Or one. Of, or one. I'm or sorry. One. For, well, yes. Oops. Mm -hmm. 4 1 to deny the legalization and to restore the entry surround to its appearance at the time of designation without the bubble on it. Thank you for coming forth. This was a very difficult decision, as you can see, but I hope you understand that. Um, we try to be as thoughtful and considerate about our decisions as possible. Thank you. Sorry, guys. Okay. With that, we'll move on to item 7B, which is 105 West Kenneth Road, Glendale Register Nomination and Mills Act Application. Okay. 
Well, good. I don't have a problem. Okay, this is a nomination application and Milzak application for 105 West Canada Road. 105 West Canada Road located the uh, Widen Brockman neighborhood. And this house is a L shaped house and designed in a modern style by architect Graham Lada and built in 1953. Graham Lada was a, a Glendale prominent architect who designed many buildings in different styles. Uh, after establishing his professional architectural office in Glendale in 1934, some of his work examples are Grand View Library, the example of uh, public buildings, and 1035 Hillcroft, exam an example of a residential building. Going back to this house, um, this house appears to be two-story at the front facade, but it is a one-story house. This house uh, features um, low pitched, low pitched uh, gable roof and uh, boxed uh, eaves around the entire roof. And also, there is a chimney at the west side of the house. Um, uh, this house at the front facade has a row of um, steel casement window, which providing horizontal emphasis for the front facade. And there is a project and a projection at the lower part of the front facade, which the in the primary entry of the house and the garage door located under the shed roof in this projection. Um, this house um, is a fine example of a modern modern style house, which uh, most characteristics of this style. And the other notable feature, uh, besides the windows at the front facade, is a, a block concrete pattern, uh, which make a, a, a special interest for this front facade. And these are um, windows at the front facade, still casement windows, which appear to be original. And you can see in this uh, photo also the um, stained wood um, surface <coughs> under the eaves around the roof. At the rear side of the house, which is accessible from the stairs at the um, east side, um, there is a patio uh, with wood column, as, column and beams, which is the only decorative elements at the rear side. Also, there is a retaining wall at the property line with the um, iron fence at the top of it, and a pool which constructed in uh, 2013. Also, uh, at the rear and west side of the house, the entire windows have been replaced with aluminum frame windows. These windows are appropriate um, shapes and the style and also size of the original windows. Um, the, the, the only difference between these windows and the original is a uh, thin profile which is missing from these windows. Sorry, the what back, profile? Thin, very thin, thin. profile, uh, which is missing from the uh, these windows at the rear and the side of the house, this side, these are also new windows. And going back to the front of the house, um, the comparing with this tree photo, um, the only uh, changes is a garage door, which is a new to this front facade. This photo taken by uh, Julia Shulman in 1956, three years after construction of the building, shows the garage door is a plain uh, wood panel door, vertical wood panel door. And this photo provided by uh, current owner shows that uh, how the garage door changed over the years. And in this photo, you can see the horizontal wood panel door for the garage. 
uh, in overall comparing with the existing condition of a front facade with the mm, photo taken by Sholwan, you can see that most part of the front facade still remains um, intact. The only change is garage door. There is also a new uh, trash enclosure uh, installed into the hill at the east side of the um, front facade. You can see in this style uh, slide. Uh, 105 West Cannot Road um, embodies much um, character defining feature of modern style, including horizontal mass, uh, deep roof eaves, um, the low pitched uh, and shared roof, and also repetition of decorative, uh, decorative elements at the lower part of the front facade. And also, this house fits uh, well in the ranch style home neighborhood. <coughs> Um, staff believes that uh, even with the changes that I mentioned, the house still retains most part of its original features. And uh, that's why staff believes that this house is qualified for designation in Glendale Register of Historic Resources based on criteria three. Uh, the applicant also suggested that the house qualifies for designation under criteria two based on its association with the uh, architect Graham Lada. But uh, staff believes the level of uh, his contribution to the history of Glendale and architectural character of Glendale is not enough to be considered as a significant contribution. That's why we recommend uh, designation for this house based on criteria three, and uh, we also recommended the house to be designated as this house as uh, after his original uh, owner, um, William and Margaret Wiz. And we have some meals that condition for this house. If you approve designation, which are replaced the garage door with a new door closer, in appearance of the door seen in 1956 photograph of the, of the house and replace or clad the wood siding <coughs> at the front trash enclosure and side gate with a sheet material that will allow these features to better blend in the overall design of the house. That was the presentation for this Thank you, Eileen. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, I don't have a card for this. Okay, please come forward. Take it, you're the applicant. Before Your name you leave, for the record. Fill out one of our I will. Cards. Good evening, Madam Hi. Commissioner, Commissioners Jay, I need. Um, thank you for listening to looking at the home. We love living there. We've owned it about four years, and I wasn't familiar with Graham Lada until I visited the doctor's house. And I accidentally found the old um, blueprints in a cabinet. And so I, and looking at those, my husband and I had never purchased a um, mid-century before, and it's quite a lot of work when you uncover a house that's pretty simple, and you really kind of have to think about the changes that you make. When Jay visited and pointed out the garage door that I thought was so beautiful and I loved, and he looked at it and said, well, it doesn't really match. And when I took out the old photograph and looked at it, I could see what he was talking about. And the trash enclosure, the same issue. Um, we did have some extensive work done on the chimney because when we had uh, bought the home and we're start, we were starting to redo it, we had some leaks that into the interior of the home all over the upstairs of about 10 feet by 12 feet of water, two inches in the house due to the, the chimney. Um, I know a great guy that, um, that replaced all the bricks on the chimney, and I've spoken to him about the trash enclosure, and he said he could make it look just sort of like the whole the walls that are like that and bring the back wall to look like the front wall and the angle to come down as it should so um, we'd be willing to completely you know tear that out and redo that along with replace the garage door um, how it was in the photo so I'm, I'm not quite sure if it was going vertically or horizontally horizontal horizontal in the photo but um, we would be willing to make both of those changes thank you thank you thank you Okay, I have no other cards. 
So the public hearing is closed. And we'll go to discussion. I'll defer to you. <laughs> Would like to go first. You are, are you deferring again, Mr. Morgan? I am deferring <laughs> to. <laughs> I'm interested to see what Commissioner Fedor has to say on that. The house. Our, our, our resident mid-century. You are. Yeah. You, you are the one. Enthusiast. See what happens when you just don't say anything. It's like <laughs> it <all comes laughs> suddenly down. somebody decides you're. <laughs> I think it's a beautiful house. I probably would have gone for Lata being recognized um, because um, I Googled him and searched him out on the internet, and he has done some things in L.A. that unfortunately have been um, renovated uh, a lot since he built them, but it seems as though he does have somewhat of a regional reputation as well as being highly regarded in Glendale, but um, I also noticed there was a house, I think, at 1135 Hillcroft that was denied um, historic status quite a long time ago, um, maybe four or five years ago, and one of the criteria, it was a lot to house, and one of the criteria was his involvement, and at, the, at that time it was also denied, so obviously there's kind of a precedent for deciding that he isn't um, significant, but I agree. But you if you want staff's view on that issue, it's not that LADA isn't significant. Not significant we, re we rely enough. on information in the nomination to understand that level of significance, and it's really tough in the absence of understanding uh, architect's entire body of work mm -hmm. to place one property as significant. For example, an architect's own house that was designed by him or her might be seen as more significant than a house mm -hmm. that's just kind of a house they did for someone else. Or if there's the architectural community singles out a property as like, oh, wow, this is one of his finest works, mm -hmm. uh, then we might look at it differently. Mm -hmm. but, it, but it's just our, our kind of staff policy to not go for that mm -hmm. un unless we really had a lot of information. So. I'm just kind of ruminating on Graham Latta and the fact that he did institutional as well as residential properties um, that, you know, make him rise a little bit above just, you know, your average. Um, but um, I think that the house is beautiful. I'm interested in, um, I mean, the, hor the, the design of the house and the fact that it's intact and the suggestions that were made uh, for modifications I think are appropriate. So um, I agree with listing it under the, um, the one single criteria cited in the application. Um, I have a question about the windows, and I have to admit, I walked around the house while you were gone, and I didn't remember making adequate note of whether or not the windows that have been replaced are representational of, um, if not material, uh, appearance-wise, texture, size, scale, framing, um, if they replicate what was there before. Yeah, well, we, we know that what was there before, we, we suppose, and I think accurately, that what was there before is the same types of windows that you see at the front of the house, the steel casement windows. Um, these are some of the best replacement windows that I've encountered, but they're still, nothing is going to match a steel window. That's just something we're living with until technology changes and we have other materials that can get those thin profiles. Um, these windows are, are mounted very flush to the wall. Steel windows can be flush, but they're usually a little bit recessed. Um, we took that into consideration in our determination and felt because they're at the back, maybe the commission would be more open to them. But, uh, you know, whether something's the best uh, replacement that we've seen means mm -hmm. that it's an appropriate replacement is something the commission has to decide. Mm -hmm. That's How many windows does that involve? Quite a few if you go to the... See 12. 12 windows? Just 12. Mm. Majority of the windows, or, or maybe half of <laughs> the front. They are metal. Uh, aluminum, right? They're aluminum versus steel, <clears throat> yeah. I think the fact that Julia Shulman photographed it also <laughs> gives it a little bit of gravitas, yeah. too, and yeah. also lends uh, Mr. Lata a little gravitas, but yeah, enough, enough of had, that already. some sort of 
they, they were connected connected um, so I'll um, I, I certainly support the nomination and I would be interested to hear my fellow commissioners comments on the windows so that's my comments for now thank you well my concern are the windows we're nominating this for the on the Glendale register and we're saying we, we really worry about windows as far as houses go now we've and I imagine this is probably the best that you can do but we're telling the people that this Glendale register is 95% complete or 85% complete but these windows are emblematic of this house but they're not the windows so that's my only concern I everything else about the house I I love the sight lines I love the the cool blues and grays of it um, I don't have as much problem with the uh, garage door but it would obviously look better if it had the the door the, the same type of door that was there when uh, Julia Schulman took a photograph of it um, my just my only concern are the, the massive amount of windows that have been replaced in the back just to remind the Commission steel steel casement windows exactly like the originals are available okay at great expense but they are available yeah okay. thank you uh, quick question for for Jay uh, at the time of nomination do we consider just the uh, was visible from the public right away or the no. entire thing oh, yeah, no, the Glender, Glender register we look at the entire property every square foot of the landscape oh, everything else were the windows replaced with permit mm -hmm. yes this was before the district was formed mm -hmm. there's no district, no district here I mean not, I'm yeah. sorry okay yeah, yeah. individual, Just a, yeah, individual register nomination okay. well I, I would concur with um, our Commissioner Bedore's comments it's a beautiful mid-century home um, you know very unique I think the staff recommendation for the changes are appropriate um, being that we help we hold these to the highest standard those properties that are put on the historic register and offered Mills Act for you know tax savings in order to restore and keep up a property um, and that we've been very very strict on windows in other properties I think it would be appropriate to put as a condition that if they truly want the des designation um, and the Mills Act that there's a work plan appropriate allowing you know some time to do that but that they would be uh, re replaced to be in keeping with the um, original windows to the house okay and just to be clear that would the sliding doors that were installed or several sliding doors at the rear would those be acceptable and we'll just focus on the windows how many at the rear um, I think two two at least looks like very large ones as well yeah like eight feet wide the, the sliding aluminum doors actually come a little closer to sliding steel if the, mm -hmm. we don't know if this yeah. had steel doors because aluminum sliders were around mm -hmm. at this time I think that I think I that think, would yeah. be appropriate I would, I would defer to staff on that so we'll just focus on the windows yes okay the other thing I noticed uh, just the driveway and stairs that went up past the trash enclosure had had been sprayed or painted or something with quite a bit of overspray and really the quality level of that wasn't really up to far on a long-term historic resource I don't know maybe that's in the works um, just something to note I don't know so we'll put a condition to remove the overspray you just I don't know what direction it's going coming or going I wasn't quite sure <laughs> but, okay. your overspray oh. was where um, on the driveway and on the stairs going up to the backyard okay. couldn't tell if it was supposed to be being painted or it was overspray from painting walls or well, we'll, we'll clarify with the owner all of the and staff if figure that out from painting walls yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. okay I'm next um, I would agree that this is a fine example um, of a mid-century home um, <coughs> windows across the front. Sorry, they're original. Yeah, right. Yeah, they're they're original. Um, it's a very nice ribbon. Um, again, the the concrete detail that was mentioned, the the wood 
uh, soffits under the eaves. Um, and I would agree that um, the garage door should be uh, taken back to its more original appearance. And the owner has agreed to that, and also um, doing something with the trash enclosure. But um, I personally, because the homes that we place on the register, we do take a 360 degree look at. So it's not just from um, the public right of way. Um, I too have an issue with the windows, and I would probably want to see also uh, some type of work plan change the windows to steel basement at the back. Okay. Motion. Motion. Let's return. Are we ready? Any more discussion? Uh, I, I could actually, I could read the conditions and then you can base the motion on those conditions. Uh, what we've heard is the commission supports uh, the staff uh, conditions of uh, replacing the garage door to be more appropriate and consistent with the early photo of the house. Um, alter the trash enclosure at the front uh, of the house to uh, be more appropriate in style and kind of overall texture. Um, to add a condition to the Mills Act to restore all of the steel windows that were removed at the rear and side facades. And a condition to investigate overspray issues and rectify them if it's not an ongoing situation. So um, I'll make a motion that the commission recommend to City Council that 105 West Kenneth um, be uh, recommended for listing on the Glendale Register of Historic Res Resources um, as well as the Mills Act with conditions as just described by Mr. J. Platt. I'm not going to repeat them. <laughs> um, is that yeah. the motion? That's a second. Okay. Roll call, call, Commissioner Morgan. Yes. Uh, Commissioner uh, uh, Vidor. Yes. Commissioner Shire. Yes. Commissioner Carpetian. Yes. Chair Vartanian. Yes. Five zero to approve with conditions. Thank you. If I can take an <coughs> interlude here, I I was so busy uh, working when we were at the beginning of the hearing that I forgot to mention that. While you know why Greg and Sean have been sticking around for so long, you probably don't know why some of these other people are here, strangers <laughs> to us. Uh, they're students in the Fundamentals of Heritage Conservation class at USC. Right. This is a class assignment. Cool. I, am, I am their teacher. <laughs> and mean because professor. I told them that they only had to stay here for two hours. They are officially dismissed if they choose to go, <laughs> but you're welcome to stay. So. But it's so interesting, it Jay. I Somehow know. Jay always invites his students I just, to the longest hearings. <laughs> yeah. well, this, was, this was a good complicated one for you guys, so uh, hopefully we'll have a good discussion. You give them extra time. credit if they stay. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, you for being up? here. <laughs> we excused too. Yeah. <laughs> You're excused. Sorry to call you out there. Okay. okay thank you. Um, with that, we will move on to 7C, which is 1106 <clears throat> Rossmoyne Avenue, Glendale Register nomination and Mills Act application. Okay. And the nomination application for Glenda Register and Mosaic application for um, 1106 Rossmoyne Avenue. This um, building is located in Rossmoyne Historic District and it is a contributor in this district. Um, the two story house built in a Spanish colonial revival style in 1935 by successful contractor John Henry Jen uh, Jenkins. Uh, he was a successful contractor and subdivider in Los Angeles and Glendale after he moved to Glendale with his family. Uh, he might design this house as well. Um, and this house is located at the corner of Ross Moyne and Cortez, which are connected with, a, with an alley. And um, 1106 Rossmoyd is an excellent example of a Spanish colonial revival home in Glendale with many character defining features of its style. 
including cross gable roof uh, clad with red tile, shallow eels with exposed rafter tails and red iron detailing. The primary entrance of this house located at the west elevation facing Ross Moyne Avenue and featured deeply recessed opening with arch head. Um, the main door is eight panel uh, wood door and appears to be original. Windows in this house are mostly divided light single hung and uh, multi-light casement wood windows which um, are orig original to the house. And one of the notable features at the front facade of this house is a three-sided bay window uh, with a metal roof and um, decorative leaded glass. Another notable feature for this house is decorative wood uh, brackets under the exposed beam uh, which support the second story project projections at the south and uh, west uh, facade of the house. At the rear, uh, the house features a balcony supported by wood beams and columns and wrought iron supports and non-original railing. Um, also, uh, there is a Juliet balcony at the rear side uh, and the, a bay window with a uh, lit glass. There is a patio at the north side of the rear facade with a shed roof. The house also has a detached garage um, on the northeast of the house, uh, and the, this garage has a storage room with uh, wood casement door uh, windows and door. And uh, this garage features um, gabled uh, clay tile roof and stucco walls and the new metal door. This door is not appropriate to the style of the house. Also, uh, there are uh, low brick walls at the property line and also at the rear um, yard of the house. And at the property line, there is an iron fence at the top of this wall, which is not original. And the entire exterior walls of this house are clad with uh, sand finish stucco, which is not original, and this work uh, has been done recently. And this uh, stucco detracts the property's historic integrity in Aurora. Um The other alteration over this house is replacement of iron railing at the rear uh, balcony. And also, there are several uh, re-roofing works for this house, but it seems that the existing tiles are original. <coughs> um, however, most part of this house appear to be original, especially the windows, uh, but the sand finish of stucco all over the exterior walls detract the integrity uh, of the historic material for this house. Um, 1106 Ross Moyne Avenue still continues to remain an excellent example of Spanish colonial revival style. Um, um, and this is an excellent example in the neighborhood. But Steve believes that with um, this existing condition and with this um, stucco over the walls, this house does not meet criteria three for designation in Glendale Register of Historic Resources. And in case if the owner agrees to, uh, to the Mills Act condition to remove this um, rough texture stucco from the walls and reclad it with uh, smooth stucco uh, appropriate to the style of the house, which style in a Spanish colonial revival style, uh, the staff recommend designation for this house based on criteria three if the owner agrees for this condition. And if the owner does not agree, so the staff recommends that HPC recommend to the city council to deny this nomination. Um, 
we do have some other condition for this house, which is replacement of the garage door with a door that is appropriate to the style of the house, if the nomination approves. And then I just, I just wanted to add one late-breaking piece of news here, and if you could go to one of the photos that shows the brick walls mm -hmm. around the back of the house. Oh, sure. Okay. So uh, there's extensive brickwork around the perimeter of the house that has extruded mortar joints where the mortar is kind of oozing out of the wall. And we've heard, and we haven't had a chance, and I apologize to the Kubotas, we haven't had a chance to talk to you about this, but we've heard from people in the neighborhood who, who've known this house that some of that brickwork was at the front of the house, was, part, was possibly part of the facades of the house. We, we don't know. So what, I'm, what I wanted to do is let the commission know that um, there's the possibility that further research, and I don't know if that would be archival research looking for photographs, physical investigation to see if there's any disruption at the walls or the possible um, incorporation of the stucco of the brick behind the new stucco, which doesn't seem... Right, yeah. And, that, and that's also an open question. If the, yeah. if the landscaping hadn't been there, Perhaps that's what we're talking about. But uh, depending on which way the commission is, is inclined to vote on this, if you were thinking that if, if the applicants agreed to change the stucco, if that was enough for you to bring this house back, or if you wanted uh, to see if there was the possibility that further research could tell us more about that condition. But that's a kind of a wild card given the rarity of finding the kinds of photos that would help us understand that. But just, just for background information, you should know this. Yeah. Okay. We'll open the public hearing, and I have a card from Babette Kubota. Hello. So I am one of the honors, and my husband, Kenji, is sitting behind me. He doesn't like to speak. <laughs> <laughs> you can stand up. Uh, <laughs> So Kenji and I have talked about that exterior. You know, we did not, we bought it last year, this house, so, and we loved the house because of the historic nature of the house. The inside is completely original. Some things are good about it and some things are bad in that there's some cracked tile in places, but um, it's very much restorable, so we like that. And um, a couple of you I know came through to see that, but it was, um, uh, we just love this house. It's really neat. <laughs> and because it is across from the Nibley House, you know, we want to keep that character. Mm -hmm. So it is our intention to live there with the historic nature of this house and maintain it and restore everything that is, like, cracked or ruined on the tile to what would have... We're keeping everything color... Like, there's some crazy colors in there, in that bathroom, um, in the master bath. But um, it's really neat, and it's unique to that house. So we want to keep that. And, um, and on the exterior, um, you know, it is amazing that that roof does seem to be original. And people have told us to change it, like people who are trying to sell us to change it to a new roof. We didn't want to do that because we like its handmade tiles and everything. So um, we did try to restore a portion of it. And we have some more work to do on the garage, which we have to figure out with the neighbor uh, next to us. But... Other than that, we're very willing to change the garage door, which we totally agree, it's ugly. <laughs> it doesn't go with the style of the house. And we talked about the stucco. And if you have to have the smooth stucco, we'll do it. We, you know, the only concern I have, and maybe you all can tell me a little bit more about this, um, is that I wonder, the smooth stucco homes that we did see in the area have a lot of cracking. And I just don't know if that's something that's part of the nature of that kind of stucco or the smooth stucco finishes. Um, we obviously did not put that on there. It was put on before we bought the house. So, um, And the rail on the <coughs> upper level we changed because it was too low and it was dangerous. I have a lot of young nieces, so it was definitely dangerous to fall from it. Mm -hmm. So that's why we changed it and made it a higher rail. But we love the house, and oh. we love the architecture. What was the original original railing? It was pretty much similar. It was just low. It was like this. It was actually this low. Mm. So it was very dangerous. I was afraid to stand up there when it was there. So that was why we did um, change it. We didn't know that we were going to do all this now, you know. Uh, maybe we would have figured. I actually did ask the guy, though, that changed the rail um, if he could 
do something to add because I too like to keep the original as as much as possible. But he was like, you know what? That is, it's not possible to do with the rail that you have. So we said, okay, fine. You know. Mm -hmm. So we did get rid of it. <laughs> well, but, all, all he had to do was just add a portion on top of it without even. It would have looked it. ugly to do that. We kind of, in other words, when you just tack something onto something, it, it, I don't know how to describe that, but it just, it, it would have, do you see, I don't know, you can't really see the rail that we have there much, but. Um, there it is. There it is. <laughs> but it was wrought iron, right? It was wrought iron, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, we tried to keep it with the same look and everything. And even the hooks are the, were there for those plants that we hung. <laughs> Yeah, so we try to keep whatever we could, and and like I said, intention even on the interiors, do the same. And we have some pictures if you want to see the inside, because I know some of you didn't make it, but uh, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. So with that, we'll... Oh, oh, did you I have, have a question, question. for the owner? Sure. Sorry. Sorry, can you come back um, up? On the restuccoing, yes. when was the... Um, rough stucco put on, do you know? I wish I could was tell you. Was that a permitted oh. activity? Or it, an unpermit. It's not, we didn't find a permit. Oh. Apparently, it was done certainly before the Kubota zoned it. It doesn't right. look really all that old. So, mm. um, and know. there's well, yeah. Um, I think that's an, certainly an interesting thing to research. What's underneath that stucco? So, that's just my comment. Yeah, it was really neat. Like when new. we we put a new, all new electrical throughout all new plumbing because we had to. It was original. <laughs> so they said it would cause a fire if we didn't change electric. But um, in doing all that, it was really neat because as the electricians went through, they uncovered a couple of original sconce locations in the living room, like four mm. of them. So we restored that and put in, you know, the lighting that would have been at that time. And they found original sconce locations in our master bedroom. They even found a prohibition closet, which I don't think you got to see, Jay. I don't remember um, it. There that was would, a little prohibition type <laughs> closet, which is really secret. Back. It's a secret thing. You push on it, it opens. <laughs> it looks like a, just a Everyone should wall. have one. <laughs> it looks like shelf is what it is. They made it like a shelf. And um, yeah, and you secretly push on it, it opens. <laughs> so pretty neat. If walls could talk. <laughs> <laughs> Thank Me you. So well, with that, we'll close the public hearing. Um, I don't want to venture to answer the question about smooth stucco cracking, and I don't know if this is the time. I guess my first thoughts are the homes are, you know, almost 100 years old, and we have earthquakes. So, yeah. Yeah, and the design <laughs> review board is, is mandating smooth stucco on almost every stucco project that we have. Mm -hmm. And I assume a good craftsperson is going to figure that out. Um, and, and ultimately, stucco does crack. You know, yes, right. From what I've seen in my neighborhood, where houses are piled one on top of one another, um, it's all cracking, ah. smooth, mm -hmm. textured. Cottage cheese, it just, you, you guys know. are all sliding down the hill. We're just sliding, sliding away, and it seems like the cracking is pretty consistent. With the smooth stucco, it's just a workmanship. If they have to wait a certain a certain time in order to apply the, the final finish, and if they don't, it cracks. But there is always, there is always elastomeric paint that many people do, but even if it cracks underneath, you won't see it. You won't see it with the, with the, with the elastomeric paint. It's a, I heard about that, right? Yeah. It's a kind of paint that expands. My mom was telling you about it, actually. I didn't know about it until... So. Anyways. Okay. Thank you. So, <laughs> sorry, I think maybe... <laughs> Too much information. No, no, that's fine. After, after the commission, you can give her some of your... Um, you have mm -hmm. a lot of um, experience in this area, I believe. Um, so back to the question at hand, a possible nomination, and I'd like to go first. Making comments? Oh, comments, yes. yeah. yeah. I'll go ahead and comment. Um, uh, thank you for bringing this before us today. I unfortunately was out of town and did not get to come by, but I live around the corner, so I, I came by, but not <laughs> did knock on your door. Um, and yeah, I think your home has some beautiful architectural features, and very unique combination of uh, the historic um, architectural elements 
um, I'm sorry, ar architectural elements that really kind of set off a, a Spanish home. And so very, very beautiful. Appreciate your attention to detail and your care and doing some of the restoration from what I can see. Um, just a couple of comments. I definitely do agree with staff regarding the garage door and the stucco changing. Um, I myself went through that. I can appreciate it. And smooth stucco will be beautiful on your home when done. Um, I do have a question really for Jay and just curiosity. The back um, balcony mm -hmm. to me is representative of really like a Monterey style when it's entirely wood mm -hmm. and it you know hangs out kind of from the structure and there's wood exactly. beams and even wood floor, even wood visible from underneath and the railing would have been wood. And the current iron balcony with an entire wood structure just looks completely off to me and like the wrong choice so they might have replaced iron for iron but I wonder truly though if iron what was there was a replacement at some point because it just yeah. it doesn't look right well, well, yeah well, some some Monterey's had iron railings also originally and yeah and so we're not calling this a Monterey but you're right yeah. it's a character feature one thought that came to me was there is, if you could show the picture of the balconette to the right on the second <laughs> floor, there is, there is historic ironwork on that facade. Yeah. And to my mind, had we had the chance to do design review on it, I probably would have used that as the motif Matt, to bring. Yes, even, even if we were removing the original and raising it to 42 inches, mm -hmm. Commissioner Garpedian's comment about raising, adding something is often a possibility. Um, we do, and we could invoke the historic building code since we're a contributor in a district and not even raise the height. But when the owner says we're, we're nervous and mm -hmm. it's dangerous, we respect that mm -hmm. and we would find a way. And so you're right, it could, it could have been wood. Mm -hmm. I, I think it could have been iron also. Okay. Um, the motif and design of the iron railing that is there, to me, does not match the house and does not match the other iron work. It's more more modern in its design and feel and um, if we're granting this the Mills Act I would like that to be on the work plan to change the iron and I know that's hard if you've just put it in and I'm not sure if it came before but would did any of this work come before you the changing yeah of we that never we never saw or? the iron replacement so. okay I don't so, think. Did, did you? I I think can't, we can't ask. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. It's the oh, public oh, hearing's oh, closed. Sorry. I forgot. Okay. So anyway, that would be an addition yeah. from a recommendation as, as a condition if the Mills Act and register property is granted, that it would be that in addition to the ones that staff recommended. And do you, do you have a preference for wood versus iron or a design well, that's can, appropriate? If we can do a little more research, I don't know if there's photos, old photos that might show, you know, years back. To oh, me, yeah, it calls out that the also, holes... So. Wood structure, I mean, would be wood, but again, at least I think the iron should match the iron on the house. And if you look at the, if you want to go to the close up of the, the balcony. balcony, you can see the detailing, or you may have to. So the. But it's definitely not some original iron, and it doesn't match the other iron on the house. So unless we found photographic evidence, we'll allow a change of the railing to wood with an appropriate design or to iron based on the iron work on the house? Name. Oh, sorry. Uh, would like to go next? Okay, I'll go. Um, thank you very much for opening up your home to, to all of us. And uh, I agree that I think this house warrants um, uh, listing on the Glendale Register with the conditions that have been described by staff, as well as um, the condition just described by Commissioner Shire. Um, I'm not sure, you know, I think I agree that this is a Monterey style balcony, and somehow or other I had the same reaction to the balcony railing, but. Um, whether it be wood or a match for what exists around the house, I'm not really sure I know. Um, so that would have to be, you know, the alternatives would be worked into the Mills Act uh, agreement. And then I think somehow there should be wording in the Mills Act agreement to um, 
with an algorithm, you know, to research um, the decorative, the rustic brick and weeping mortar um, and its potential existence underneath there. It would be, you know, quite, a, quite an interesting adventure to bring back anything that was there. Uh, there are some people, I think, around the neighborhood or, you know, in, like, it's been called to our attention, so it's possible that there are some, if not pictures, maybe oral histories <laughs> that can be taken. Yeah, we, we do have a 95-year-old neighbor who's been there forever who may ooh, remember ooh. something. Okay, <laughs> grab right after the meeting's over. Just run right over there. But um, mm -hmm. um, if we could just include that as well, too. I'm not saying, you know, definitively bring it back, but do the research, and if it's there, and maybe we have to revisit that in another review, but I wouldn't want to hold up the uh, the landmarking uh, to answer that question. Okay, would you like to put a, since we put time frames on Mills Act conditions, which we forgot to on the last item, and, uh, and if, if you wanted to reopen that item, even though the applicant's not here, just so we can establish a time limit, that would be great. Um, but in this case, you could have a dual time limit. You could have, you know, do research for three months or, or mm -hmm. whatever. If nothing comes up during that time, then we can move forward with whatever mm -hmm. other projects within. And for an expensive project like restuccoing, we often uh, give a two or even three year time frame, depending. Mm -hmm. three years. I think three years would be. Yes, yeah. I think three years would be. Yeah. That's good. And three months for research? That's staff research. No. That's <laughs> applicant research. That's applicant research. research. Well, since there's, okay. a long, help, but there's kind of a long lead time. Um, you know, you're, I don't know what your plans are for restuccoing and what your time out, outlook looks like, but maybe we should give a little more time to collect information from... Six months? Six months? Yeah. Six months. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Because, you know, talking to people, potentially going back into archives, maybe... So there may be a brick wall in the front that is hidden today? Is that, is that it, it, it was either removed. We, we know there's a, a brick wall next to the walkway that goes in front of the house. Uh -huh. Based on what we've heard, there might have been more extensive brick that may have been part of the facade. I don't know. Probably removed. It doesn't look, you don't see a texture break or a, a no, size break right. on the front. So it probably was removed. And it could just be confusion about that. Mm -hmm. Uh, low wall. So, does does the researching of this involve, you know, I mean, there is an appropriate way to break in and look at. Do we need to prescribe anything for how one would do, you know, find evidence of that, or just you know, tap away until the stucco comes off and see <laughs> what's there? You know, coming off anyways. <laughs> um, I, I, I could I could meet with the Kubotas on site and see if there was any any physical visual uh, evidence before like, we start digging in. That's kind of a you know yeah. specialty project that may require some special consultation. And I don't feel strongly enough personally to be digging into walls and causing you know issues in the next six months that they might not want. You know, want to, to patch for two, for two years, yeah, until they get to their stucco project. So I leave that to staff's discretion, personally. Okay. Well, we'll we'll definitely go look at it and see. <clears throat> and if I may, I, you I'm are done. still. Um, but two things. I think one. I think the the neighbor just adjacent, whose home we looked at earlier, who's lived there for over 50 years, will probably have the best. Will be the best resource. Mm -hmm. for what the house looked like on the front. And then if if it did come out that there was brickwork on the front facade of the house that had the weeping mortar, would we be requesting that that be? I mean, that seems to me like I don't know what to say. It's, if it's if the done. house had it, yeah, are we going to insist that it be brought back? Seems to me that would be rather... I mean, I, I, I don't, don't know personally. how that would work. Well, that's it, it, well, it's consistent with the commission's goal to bring the house back to its earlier appearance and asking for the stucco to be removed. So if we did find brick and knew that was an integral part of the design, it's, it would be appropriate for the commission to ask for it to be brought back. So would that just be part, so that would It'd just be, be written into the plan and then it would say that if there were a portion of the front of the house, yeah, what Just I could use the do, surround around the door for we, lack of it. We could rewrite the stucco condition to include, you know, if if it's determined that brick was a feature, an original feature of any facades, um, that will be restored as part of the restuccoing project. Okay. 
Sorry. Yeah, we. <laughs> Sorry. Um, okay, I, if everybody's uh, comfortable with that. Yeah. I, have, uh, I have one question that the rod iron supports underneath that balcony, they're, they, those, I hope that those beams are structural beams that mm -hmm. are coming out. Because I wouldn't want to stand on that balcony if those were <laughs> no, they're, those, those were structural. I'm telling you, I, with this very tiny wrought iron supports that are in an angle, I don't think they will support anything. Are they just decorative items, or uh, we I, we couldn't tell? They they could be a retrofit. They look like they've got some age to them, but I'm not sure. It I'm is sure it is a pretty deep projection for the balcony, but it's not impossible to yeah. have been built that way. So. Where we, we, our assumption was to just leave them as is, and hopefully the Kubotos aren't terrified of using the balcony. So. <laughs> Could we also go to the picture of the patio? I wanted to take a look at that a second. I had a question if that was an ad addition or some work. Was that originally wood beam structure with a stucco? What is, what's going on there in the far right? It does not look original. No. Um, I honestly don't remember when we visited. We were on a whirlwind tour of properties when we were out there. I don't remember that. Because that <clears throat> seems odd for this home. You're referring to that bumped out. Yeah. That solid. The covered deck, basically. I think the upper left photo, right? Upper left photo, right? the, upper left photo but the full, yeah, or right photo. Yeah. Right. What we yeah. could do that is. That triangular stucco. Solid. Yeah, and this is, rectangular opening that looks like a garage door opening is. Yeah, it looks a little strange. If if you know, that's the kind of thing where we've accepted lots of additions on designated properties. If the commission thought there was a way to improve its appearance, possibly by introducing a beam or corbels or something to give yeah. it a little more character. Mm -hmm. um, that doesn't look to be in char character to the house. No. Architectural design. Now, would you be okay with a? retrofit of the existing opening to just give it more Spanish character or would you want to see that investigated and possibly removed? I suppose to, oh sorry, go ahead, I think that question goes to you. Uh, we have no sense of how old that is. Right. We don't have a permit or uh, We can include that in our investigative process. I'll, I'll look one. at it more closely. To me that's more of an eyesore than restoring any brick that might have been there. That That just seems off it's not mm -hmm. in keeping with the style the, the question remains would the commission want to see it removed if we know it's not an original feature or is there a way to doll it up a little to make it at least feel compatible can we see designs that's a tricky one to fix um, it, it wouldn't be something that we would normally bring to the commission and we don't know when it would happen um, what would your suggestions be to make the um, that uh, opening smaller and then put a surround on it? Put, um, well, see, tip, typically in this architectural style, you would have seen a wood beam maybe even open on the side there. Again, I don't know what's up there. Again, I did not get to see the house myself, so I'm kind of questioning or if anyone from the site visit knows. You know, it would have been heavy wood post and beam open on the side. Yeah, it's I don't a, know if this is a common condition when the design review board looks at <clears throat> Spanish, you know, trying to work, architects trying to work in Spanish vernacular. They often will call for a beam and mm -hmm. corbel mm -hmm. kind of situation to kind of give some visual support to the. Oh, to the, the that opening. would help, like matching the other corbel details on some of the woodwork on the other front or right, back of have, the house. We have the beam ends that we could replicate. Um, it would, it would still be a slightly unusual form for the back of the house. Again, it is the back of the house. Yeah. It would be at the upper part of the opening to create kind of a lintel across the opening. So the stucco is resting on something wood. I mean, like looking more like a beam. That would be better. And then you, just the wood trim that looks like it's there on the left. You know, that I think needs to be improved when you do the beam header. The wood trim on the Well, is it, a, it looks like wood or is it, is it a gutter? No, it's got like something in it. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure, yeah, I'm not like sure either. Sorry, can we stucco um, um, pointed? No, Commissioner Shia, could you, yeah, yeah use yeah. the pointer and go up this there? And, 
No, right there. Yeah, right at the top of the opening. Oh, right here. Yeah, right there. That. That's, that's with stucco, I think. Stucco yeah, that's okay. not a, that whole thing should be wood or a corbel or. Okay, how's, how's this for a condition? <clears throat> Staff will investigate the patio feature at the rear um, to determine to the best of our knowledge whether this is an addition. If it is an addition, we'll uh, work with the Kubotas to come up with a design that will be more in keeping with the overall style while letting the structure remain so its use can remain. Um, but this won't come back to the commission, so it has to be a condition of approval. So that's fine. Yes. That's fine. Yeah. That said, do you want to read all the conditions and then we'll do a motion? <laughs> sure. Or does anyone else want to? Sorry, can I ask one more question? Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, I, oh, well, I was hoping not to go to another. Page. No, I'm good. <laughs> You're good. I love the house. Okay. I love. I love that house. Sure, sure. Got Please things. go ahead. Um, I think we talked about the front door needing to be refinished. So I'd like to add, yeah, I'd like to add that. I don't think that was in the, no. you know, it has Refinish the front door. Uh, just needs a, you know, freshening up. Okay. So. I did have one quick question. This Go is ahead. in the Rossmine district, right? Yes, yeah. it is. Was this, it didn't say or I didn't see it. Is it a contributing? Yeah. It was? Okay. Then I missed it then. And then I just wanted to ask about the beautiful brick walls that we talked about briefly that um, enclose the backyard and then there's one across the front entryway. Um, personally, I, you know, those um, original brick walls with the weeping mortar, I, you don't see them very often. Um, and I know we have, I'm wondering if there's a way we can ensure their protection over time they're identified as a character defining feature in the staff report which mm -hmm. is what we would ultimately go back to okay 20 years from now if someone was proposing something okay so i think that's we're good yeah we're covered as good as we can do okay. right now okay very good okay so uh reading back conditions we have a condition to restucco uh the entire structure with a smooth finish uh, that's appropriate to the style and era of the property. Replace the garage door with an appropriate door. Um, we will remove the railing at the second floor balcony at the rear and replace it with either a wood railing that's appro of appropriate design or an iron railing based on the existing ironwork on the house. Um, we will include a secondary or a condition with a different time frame. Uh, to allow the Kubotos time to research the uh, rustic brick and determine if there was any of this at the facade. If we determined that there was and that it was an important character feature, uh, we would ask that it be restored as part of the uh, stucco uh, project. And we will re... Whoa. <laughs> Let's go to the ones I know. We will um, uh, investigate the rear patio and come up with a design scheme to better incorporate uh, that form, particularly the opening into the style of the house. And, oh, what I wrote before is I was gonna rewrite the conditions so the, that to include the brick with the stucco. Mm -hmm. And we'll have a six month time frame for the uh, brick research and we'll include the uh, patio research during that period. And then a three year time frame for the rest of the conditions to be met. Yep. Bringing us, and we always go to December 31st of the calendar year, three years after this. So. Okay. Do we have a motion? I propose motion. Okay. Based on what Mr. Platt said. And, and, and those are just the conditions? To approve. Could to approve. Yeah, sorry. On page four of our report. You can read most of that. That the Historic Preservation Commission recommended to the City Council that the property at 1106 Rossmine Avenue be designated as a historic resource in the Glendale Register of Historic Resources based on the findings identified in the staff determination. And the conditions. And the conditions that Mr. Platt has read right. into the record. And, and the name would be Act. Peterson House? Yes. Isn't there a Peterson House already? Can you have two Peterson I think Houses? There is actually. There is one on Dang. Cordova, I think. Yeah. 
So Peterson I'm, House Two. Peterson House Two. <laughs> Samuel Maybe one's S O N and one's S C N. Hopefully. Is this not I think the, the other one is S C N, but I'm not. Oh, I'm sure. sorry. Eileen corrects. Uh, it's the the Weiss House. W I E S E. Oh, this is the Weiss House. Wait, oh no, 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 no. No, no, that's the this other is, one. Yes, so. that's. Okay. That's the one on. This Peterson on the report. I was just. Yeah, let's let's stick with the report and hope that there are different spellings, and I'll, I'll investigate that. Okay, I believe. That. I don't or we sign. could use the first I initial. Uh, I think we do, do that. S. John, Peterson. S. John, or, J. H. Yes. Or S. B. Peterson or Samuel Peterson. Yes. I second the motion. <laughs> okay. Roll call, please. When you're ready. Okay. Um, uh, Commissioner Morgan. Yes. Commissioner Vidor. Yes. Commissioner uh, Shire? Yes. Commissioner Garpedian? Yes. And Chair Arpanian? Yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Congratulations. 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 Class dismissed. Home improvement. Uh, okay, item, I'm just going to read into the record item number eight, which is planning division updates and informational briefings, and as we have none uh, at this meeting, and I'm just going to look at you and ensure that we have none. Something crossed my mind earlier, and it's completely. Oh, lost, do so. we need to go back? You had mentioned we need to. Oh, the uh, time frame oh, for the, the time frame. We Act. We Act. Act. Ah, yes. Please reopen. Reopen the uh, 105 the West Kenneth hearing. Okay. So do we we officially open the 105 West Kenneth hearing? Okay. Open now. And the conditions on that project were replacing the garage door, replacing the windows at the rear, um, recladding or revising the, the uh, trash enclosure, and overspray paint overspray. And the overspray. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, can we put them on a yearly plan so that they do the things maybe the front of the house first, garage door? trash enclosure and then give them the longest amount of time for the window so between a one and three year plan it's commission's option so. that would be my recommendation mm -hmm. so one Makes year sense. for the trash and garage door the garage door and overspray three years for the windows yes. yeah it's yeah, big <laughs> mm. All right, very good. I have one humble request before we yes. adjourn. Is uh, is it possible in our reports to indicate uh, the size of the house, the square footage of the house, and the lot size as well? Um, sure. I think that that would be very is that helpful. relevant, or it's it's like any other report. You're 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 having a little bit more information. Okay. Try to remember to do that. And sorry, Jay, I think we talked about it, but and you're aware that where possible if we can just get side by sides when we have to be looking at sure, two, yeah. you know, kind of for comparison. Um, yes. Yeah. Okay. And I don't know if you like looking on Google while we're in the meeting, but if you want to include photos, <laughs> that would be fine too. <laughs> Okay. Good. Thank you. With that, we're adjourned. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.